I'm running the laps you get when you're late for training. I'm doing this lap so you can get to training safely. Because late is always better than never. Being late isn't the end of the world. For causing a road crash by going even a little bit over the limit, could be. This lap so, so you can, can all get, get to put in back, back safe. safe. This lap. This lap. This lap. This lap is so you can show up to your team and slow down on the road. There is literally no reason for you to speed. So this lap, so you don't have to rush. Hang on. Why am I running laps? I'm retired. Toyota Genuine Tow Ball? Dad, here it is. Designed and tested by Toyota. Oh. We might need to take this tow ball out for a test drive. Mm. Good thinking. Find your O at your local Toyota dealer with a $1,500 finance deposit bonus across the Hilux range. Toyota. Stay focused. We're just here for a tow ball. A Toyota Genuine tow ball? Dad, here it is. Designed and tested by Toyota. Oh. We might need to take this tow ball out for a test drive. Mm. Good thinking. Find your O at your local Toyota dealer with a $1,500 finance deposit bonus across the Hilux range. Toyota. Toyota Genuine tow ball? Dad, here it is. Designed and tested by Toyota. Oh. We might need to take this tow ball out for a test drive. Mm. Good thinking. Find your O at your local Toyota dealer with a $1,500 finance deposit bonus across the Hilux range. Toyota.
there is goal. Pressure on the Leopold defence. Burke tries to take it out. Oh, oh stolen by Jared Carter, who runs into the goalpost. Nearly sends it flying into Church Street. But he's kicked the goal, and he also put K Rock's own in there as well, I think. By nine. Kellett gets it down. Side of the pack, Mulraney. Riccardi goes free. Handball over the top. Now the pigeon. Can he kick another one? The pigeon has kicked the goal! Tyler Pigeon! When it matters, he's kicked it. He's got the beak up and down. Do that. Insufficient intent paid. Keaton Rayner wants to spot up Garner. Has he got enough on it? Flying was Elliot McDonald. Here's Elliot McDonald on ground. Elliot McDonald snaps and goals. And they're back within 15. I'm running the laps you get when you're late for training. I'm doing this lap so you can get to training safely. Because late is always better than never. Being late isn't the end of the world. For causing a road crash by going even a little bit over the limit, could be. This lap so, so you can, can all get, get footy in back safe. This lap. This lap. This lap. This lap is so you can show up to your team and slow down on the road. <laughs> There is literally no reason for you to speed. So this lap, so you don't have to rush. Hang on. Why well, am I running laps? I'm retired. Toyota Genuine Tow Ball? Dad, here it is. Designed and tested by Toyota. Oh. We might need to take this tow ball out for a test drive. Mm. Good thinking. Find your O at your local Toyota dealer with a $1,500 finance deposit bonus across the Hilux range. Toyota. Stay focused. We're just here for a tow ball. A Toyota Genuine tow ball? Dad, here it is. Designed and tested by Toyota. Oh. We might need to take this tow ball out for a test drive. Mm. Good thinking. Find your O at your local Toyota dealer with a $1,500 finance deposit bonus across the Hilux range. Toyota.
remember, stay focused. We're just here for a tow ball. A Toyota genuine tow ball? Dad, here it is. Designed and tested by Toyota. Oh. We might need to take this tow ball out for a test drive. Mm. Good thinking. Find your O at your local Toyota dealer with a $1,500 finance deposit bonus across the Hilux range. Toyota. Pretty good on the lip, as Glenn Keast mentioned. Uh, as well. That's uh, that's unusual for Robbo. Absolutely uh, unusual. <laughs> Birchie's out the middle ground report. Thanks to South Point Garden Supplies. What's the uh, ground looking like this afternoon, Birchie? And then more importantly, the rain and the wind. Yeah, the ground's holding up pretty well. We've obviously had a lot of games on it, but um, still pretty green on top. There's a few patches of wear around the wings and and just out the front of goals there. But um, the wind not as strong as yesterday, coming from that southerly direction again, and uh, probably a couple of goals in it. But the players will be able to navigate that easily today um, as opposed to a crosswind which is really tricky so um should be a good game. South Point Garden Supplies Ash and the team at South Point Garden Supplies 15 Boneyards Avenue Torquay just behind the Bunnings. Uh, everybody will be getting down to uh, South Point in the next few weeks after the footy season. Lots to do around the house I would suspect for many but you'll have the toss of the coin shortly. Uh, let's go to uh, Kirsch in the expert chair for the Sporting Globe Eat Drink Sport Rory Street Geelong. How do you think Kirsch this one's going to play out this afternoon here at West? Uh, well, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because there's so many areas you've got to break this game down into and have a look at their forward lines. You've got to look at their defensive structure behind the ball. You've got to look at their midfield. And when you look at their midfield, where it all starts in the engine room, we are talking about the number one clearance team in the competition versus the number two clearance team. So Marriage averaged 48 clearances a game. South Barwon averaged 47 clearances a game. So that engine room is just going to go head-to-head -to -head today and it's going to be one hell of a battle, I reckon, in there. And um, we all say, you know, each week that's where the game's won or lost as to who's getting their hands on the ball first. Getting it to the outside. Both have some really good outside run. Both have some dominant, dominant forwards. And yet, both have some really good intercept markers behind the ball. So I reckon who in their respective lines can stand up and, you know, succumb to the, the pressures of the game of football, but particularly the finals pressure and uh, who uh, who does their job better, I suppose, today. And all the indicators have got us. Uh, intercept marks, they're one and two in the comp for that. Contested possession, they're one and two in the comp for that. We have got an absolute battle on our hands today. I, mean, I reckon if the, the ball gets to the outside, who's going to have the better outside run and who can use it better going into their forward half? Fraser Ford's a big one. Where does he line up today? Does he go forward? Does he stretch them up forward? I reckon they can. I reckon they can go Caldo, Jonty and Fraser Ford up forward and I reckon that may stretch St Mary's defensive end a little bit. Um, so who, who goes to him, Kirsch? You're looking down the list. I mean, you've got Ali McDonald's got a bit of height but probably lacks the experience. Uh, you've got Charlie Sprague's probably undersized. Uh, who else I mean, Rudd's got some height, but he's been playing well forward of the ball. There isn't a lot of um, natural matchups for him, are there? There's not. It might be. It might be even a young kid. A young. What's his name? Hamish Burke goes to him as a uh, tries to play a tall defensive line. Oh, well, match the, Or does 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 um, Sam Burke go back and take him? Yes, so, that's the uh, thing. Sam Burke. Yeah, and that's that's the, that's a thing. South Bow and Neil would be thinking that. How can we stretch them? How can we make them change their structure? Sam Burke's been playing forward. Can he go back and? play a defensive role. Then you take away a goal kick and have a new no Dobson, no Peck. There's their two highest goal kickers. Who's going to kick the goals for him? Harry McMahon's going to have to step up and kick five or six and there's a Dion Johnson going to have to chip in for three or four. So some things have to change. Does Rudd play deeper? So a lot of things that can come into this game and it's really just those little matchups that can change the aspect of the game. Head to head thanks to White Cross Healthcare. What's, what are we looking at for head to head this afternoon, Kirsch? We are going an interesting one today. We're going Michael Rudd, the former Falcons captain the current Carlton VFL listed player. He was huge in that first final last week. He was absolutely fantastic. He leads the competition for goal assists. So he's the Groin Myers of the competition. Big ruddy. Obviously double the size of Groin, but uh, he's uh, number one in the comp for that. Versus Fraser, Grumpy Cat Fort. We've <laughs> spoke about him. The Grumpy Cat's going to play a huge part in this final series. And today he can turn it on. He's the number two in the comp for score involvements. Former Sandville superstar. Be interesting to see up where he lines up. We're saying he's going 
going forward. Michael Rudd, can he have the influence to get some Marys over the line? Or can the grumpy cat do his thing that he does each week and get his team over the line? Head to head, thanks to White Cross Healthcare, scooters, walkers, but much more. Trusted advice, best solutions, both teams out on the ground. And the umpires are out on the ground this afternoon. Oh, wow, we. If there's no better Sunday for Kirsch, Hamish Irvin, Daniel Wilson, and Norm Douglas. Uh, I'm just watching Norm. He's just getting his body limber for his theatricals for the day. <laughs> <laughs> we had Adam Jones in here earlier who just came back from Singapore because it's all too hard for a Jonesy sometimes. He has to go away and fair enough, spend though. a week at the raffles in Singapore in bits and pieces and does whatever he does. Stare at a mirror and ask why. Yeah. <laughs> he was saying they love the feedback of Kirsch around the umpire group. They love it. Well, Errol does, but... Uh... <laughs> Errol had the GD yesterday. He was well out of your way yesterday, <laughs> so it was good. <laughs> Our own battles here. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sure they love it. They know it's all in good jest. Yes. We want us some consistency. That's all we ask for. That's right. Birchie's out in the middle. And uh, South Bar wearing their Indigenous jumper too in the final, Birchie, this afternoon. Yeah, they look an absolute treat all in white. And they've got the Indigenous jumper today. So um, looking really great. Yeah, we're, we're happy that uh, the teams have worked out well, the fact the, that they Leopold might. did the same thing. Absolutely. Yes, they, yeah. the white. yes, there's a lot of green sometimes when some of these teams play in the Kirsch. So too much green. Too much. <laughs> I think there should be a rule where you can only have one team in each competition that wears green. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care who, you just work it out between yourselves. Well, but, uh, it's going to be an easy day this afternoon for us to even see, see the players with their Indigenous jumpers on South Bar. And so, they do look good, don't they? It looks a, a really do. good picture. They do, absolutely. Uh, there's a lot of people on the ground too. Big crowd here this afternoon as well for the first semi-final. As you would expect, the other leagues uh, finish now for season 2024 and obviously with Geelong having the week off as well. We're going to have the toss of the coin and uh, we'll go down to Birchie because I see Matt Caldo who's down there for South Bar and... Uh, Birchie, Jack Blood down there as well. Who won the toss? St Mary's won the toss. They'll kick with the aid of that breeze from okay. the first. Thanks to Birchie. Thanks to A&B Quality Shelving. Quality shelving and storage for your home, office or workplace. Uh, hugging the boundary for us this afternoon. Um, get a good start, Kirsch. That's what they need to do. Yeah, and that's what Keisty said. They want to come out and, uh, you know, really hit the ground running, come out with some energy, some vigour and some uh, excitement. So let's see how they start. But uh, South Barwon, they're pretty good starters themselves. So they'll be looking to score against the breeze. We saw it yesterday. Only the one goal kicked against the breeze. One goal two, I think, for the game uh, against the Breeze. And Sam Scott reckons he kicked the sealer, he told us, <laughs> off air pre-game and uh, kicked the sealer against the Breeze. And uh, that's how tough it was yesterday. I don't think the wind's as bad as that Birchie down there but um, as yesterday, but it looks like it's still favourable. Uh, let's go around the panel. Potter, what do you think? <laughs> oh, Potter, what have you done? Well, who do you reckon Potter would pick? South Bowen? Who would know? Yeah. Potter. <laughs> South Bowen by 10 points is going to pick them. Uh, Birchie, down to you. What do you reckon? Uh, uh, my heart says South Bowen, but my head says St Mary's uh, by 16 points. St Mary's by 16 points. Buzz? I think it's going to be a real low scorer. I'm going to go St Mary's by three points. Three points, OK. I am thinking St Mary's by four points. <laughs> The boss won't be happy with that, but bad luck. Kirsch, the pendulum. Yes, here it and is. Here we go. Here we go. Pendulum's we been go. all. I'm going to say. I'll tell you the truth. Born. Pendulum's been all over the shop this year, but uh, <laughs> it's really. Do you know what stuffs the pendulum up? Sides that, no disrespect to these sides, plays St Albans and that. They really off balances the pendulum. So when you come <laughs> up against they? good sides, the pendulum's out of whack because they're smacking these sides by 700 points each week. Anyway, <laughs> pendulum. St Mary's a plus 544 in the offensive column. That means they've kicked 544 more points, Buzz, than their opposition, South Barwon. They are 178 in the defensive column. That's a massive swing of 722 points in favour of St Mary's. Divide that by the game's played of eight and that's a 40-point swing to St Mary's today. Ah. Astronomical in a final, but that's what the data says. <laughs> the pendulum. Well done, Kirsch. St Mary's Kirsch. by 40 points this afternoon. You're either going to be really right or superiorly be badly wrong. <laughs> Being badly wrong a lot of times with the yeah. pendulum. Don't worry Absolutely. about that. Don't worry about that, exactly. St Mary's box. Kirsch's box next to us here on the flank and, and South Barn at the other end which is probably good for us. Sorry Jason Kirsch just looking Charlie Sprague looks, looks like he's got the uh, the first oh, task yeah, of Razor Ford. That's interesting. There you go. So, he's thrown up by you Buzz uh, as a possible matchup. And we're going to get some Wombat Gully Plant Farm matchups as we go from Kirsch. So the team at Wombat Gully for all your gardening needs. Wombatgully.com.au. There's going to be some uh, great one-on-one -on -one battles this afternoon here at West Oval. First semi-final, as we said. Winner through to Meats and Joey's in the prelim. Loser out for season 2024. And here is Josh Conway.
underway. Minchin back in the team and wins the first hit out and the free kick for St Mary's. He ran away, didn't know the free <laughs> kick was going his way. Has Ham on the overlap on the wrong side for him, so Ford's kicking on his non preferred right and turns it over to Todd White at half back, who goes on his left peg, drills one towards Noble. Ling got a fist in, and was it kept in? It was just by Mawson, but the ball goes out of play in front of the scoreboard. 30 seconds in. Any other matchups? Wombat Gully Plan Farm, you can see already, Kirsch. Yeah, Hamish Burke has the job on Caldo, and at the other end, Rowan Goff has the, Burke, uh, the job on Sam Burke at the moment. Boundary throwing 55 around from South Barnes. Gold Minchin gets it down back in the team today. Kelly O'Neill also back in the team. Kick inside 50 in front. Fort got a hand to it. Hand behind as well. Connors is there. Chip tried to throw. Oh, he threw it away. Umpire said play on. Still there. Umpire Douglas comes in, and it will be a ball up. 40 out from the South Barland goal. Kicking against the breeze in this first term. Birchie told you from uh, down on boundary. South Point Guard Supplies is going towards the end. St Mary's are kicking. Ruck contest goes to the back of the pack. Uh, Carmody tried to tap it on, couldn't do so. Keast, he tried to get it on the up hand, left it behind. And uh, pack develops again. Nice extra for uh, St Mary's this afternoon. Kirsch with Matty Keast in the team. Well, geez. Yeah, well, he'll be aiming for a uh, grand final uh, berth next week, won't he himself? Herbie. There was a couple yep. of players that were down a bit yesterday for Werribee, so who knows? There might be a door open there for him. His first game for St Mary's since round 17 as the ball goes out of play right near the bike track, still in the forward pocket for South Barwon. No score, early stages. If you're at the ground, you won't miss Matt Keast. He's in the bright pink boots as well, and we'll get plenty of the footy. Averaging 28 touches in his appearances for St Mary's this season. Minchin wins it down, the throw in favour him. Mawson lays a strong tackle and it's a tight and tough start as you'd expect, Kirsch. Absolutely. You, are, you know, both sides are going to bring the energy early. They're going to come out with some positivity and that's exactly what they've done. It's going to be hot and defensive pressure is going to be up early. Minchin gets rid of Fort. Just throws a boot at it, gets it a couple of metres away. Jeez, Ham was dumped into the deck. Noble taps it forward towards Kelly for South Bar. Madigan picks it up on the angle, squaring ball towards Caldo. Goes with the one hand, the ball floated over his head. Carmody arches the back. Can he bring it around? Oh, yes, he can. An inspiration's paid goal of the day. Contender from Carmody. And the Swans are on the board. They're one straight six. And Mary's yet to score. Two and a half gone. First term, K-Rock, Harvey Norman, Karai and Warren Ponds. First quarter scoreboard. Well, I've been a little bit critical over the last two years of South Barwon Smalls at times where they get too high up the ground and they don't work back hard enough to get for the ball. But that's exactly the last couple of weeks. Carmody and Noble, they've been so dangerous at the fall of the ball for South Barwon. And that's exactly their job. That's their role. And that's exactly where they've got to be. That's a great start by Carmody. Back to the middle. South Barn with the first of the afternoon. Hits Callan on the head through the middle. Garner for St Mary's. Long kick inside 50. First foray. Oh, good punch away by the TV evangelist Huggins. He gets it to the front. Loftus is down there as well. Kick off the ground by Copley. And he has seen it over the boundary line for a throw in. Left half forward for St Mary's. Attacking the northern end in this first term. And we'll have a boundary throw in. Nick Minchin back in the team, as we said, up against Callot. They're going to have a great battle this afternoon. Neither really get a tap down. Madigan pushed off the football through the middle was Wiedemann. He got it. Kick was smothered from Paddy Kelly. Goes to the side now. Hughes goes on along the line towards Caldo. Big punch away by Hamish Burke. And he sees it over the line. Centre wing, broadcast side. We're going to have another boundary throw in South Bar on one straight six. And Mary's yet to score. We've played four minutes first term on the Bar on Foods time clock. He's given away a lot of size on Caldo Hamish Burke, isn't he? Height, size and kilograms, but that was a good start by him. Callot won it down for South Barwon. Madigan looked like he was taken high. There's a whistle from the non-controlling umpire, who's a fair way away, Kirsch, but uh, it, was probably, away. it was probably there. It was right. To be fair. So Madigan on centre wing. Neutral territory inside 50. Here is Caldo. Up high. Got a good piece of it too. Burke at ground level. Lost the footy. Ling tackled. Here is Charlie Sprague. Tumbles one forward and it works. Fortuitous, but Successful nonetheless. Copley just backward of centre wing. Shows a lot of it, but it's okay to Dion Johnston on centre wing. Plays on, improves the angle, just goes to true centre half forward. Big fat, uh, big pack f forms. Rudd was there, comes to ground level. Here he is. Went without the footy. Sherman found a way through when there wasn't one, but he's flying shot at goal. Misses everything, and it's out on the full. So still no score for St Mary's. Nearly five minutes in first term on the Barland Foods time clock.
Buzz, the last couple of weeks we had last week 16 out in the fools because of the conditions. Yesterday we had 10, and that's our first for the day already. <laughs> that's thanks to Curse Eye this afternoon. And it's going to be Dylan Starkey from right on the goal line to kick it in towards Todd White and he's just taken the mark down low and next to the boundary line at half back he chips the ball to Doyle Madigan so they're attacking around the boundary line Australia 2 style South Barwon he goes Madigan a foot kick towards centre wing big pack there in front hold said the umpire going to South Barwon Fraser Fort from behind was held so he wants to play on quickly kicks the ball over the top he's got Carmody out the back who takes it at left half forward started well here the Swans moving the footy into the breeze he plays on now 60 from goal goes long towards Caldo who's got the sit on the side and he comes in no umpire says didn't hold it long enough play on the call still about 20 out from goal pack develops he's going to come in and ball it up and he had a lot of that then didn't he Kirsch he had a lot of purchase I thought he a bit stiff there, Caldo, that's for sure. So, he played six minutes. Going to be a ball up, free kick, and it's going to be against South Barwon. Hold on for Nick Minchin. The big ruckman's going to take the free kick in the last line of defence for some Aries. Started well. The big ruckman handballs to Mashman on a standing start. Mashman was ready for it. <laughs> kick quickly, he wasn't. He was caught by surprise. Connors does well. Just launched at the footy. Short ball into Chalkcraft. He's at true centre half back. We'll call it for St Mary's. Kicks a long way to centre half forward, and it's a good kick too. And finds Rudd, who had the size advantage on Huggins. He takes the mark on 50, plays on. He has Sherman at left half forward, who marks just inside the paint. Kirsch. Yeah, interesting. Ruddy could have kicked that from there. It's almost the same distance, really only gained about five metres and almost the same angle. So um, just that extra possession to get a shot on goal where Rudd probably could have gone back and finished it himself. We saw yesterday five or uh, well, four goals in a row from Leopold from the exact same area with the breeze. Uh, Zach Sherman, not much angle to speak of. Just be a matter of accuracy. Very experienced player. In comes Zach Sherman. That looks pretty good. Straight through the middle. Never looked like missing. We're all tied up after seven minutes. Both teams, one straight six on the K-Ruck. Harvey Norman Cryer, Maul Pond's first quarter scoreboard. You get the ball in the user's hands, and Cage Hellcraft is one of the best in the competition for using the ball. He looked up from centre-half back and just punted it long to Michael Rudd. And Ruddy one-on-one, he's very hard to beat. He's a superstar footballer, and another goal assist for, for Michael Rudd. Peace was good, too. Just lowered his eyes, didn't he? Oh, he just, just chipped it back in yeah, the corridor, back didn't in, yeah. Yeah, that's the, They're the that's good ball the users. Feeling, yeah. Lower the eyes, you can see your options, and uh, you hit him. Back to the middle, Minchin and Kellett. Kellett gets it down. Rove, though, by Maishman. Goes towards half forward. Open. Loftus comes out. Tries to tap it on towards Dion Johnston. Coming the other way was Starkey. Boris is there, too. Ripped off the football at defensive 50. Johnston used his pace and speed to get there, and he got it towards Harry McMahon. Now Burke on the outside. At the back, Travellini got a hand to it, but pushed through. Austin Shepard was right next to him and threw for one behind. So... St Mary's at 117. They lead South Barn 1 straight 6. Harvey Norman K Rock first quarter school ball. We played eight and a half in the first term on the Barn Foods time clock. We have Starkey to bring it in for the Swans. It's an awful tumble punt towards Fort and Sprague, who both have the contest. Ball out of play. Still just forward of centre wing for St Mary's. Hot start, as you'd expect. Good crowd here at West Oval. As uh, Jace rightly points out, no uh, footy on today, so you would expect a good crowd. Minchin and Callet do battle in the ruck. A strong tackle laid by Keaton Rayner on Cunningham. They've got the job on each other this afternoon. Tossed up quickly by the umpire. Minchin again, he started well. This is Mary's ruckman. And we'll have another stoppage as Cunningham comes in and lays a strong tackle. One point margin, one point lead, I should say. To St Mary's, early stages, first term, one down, Garner. Steadies, kicks inside 50 towards McMahon, who couldn't mark. It was spoiled from behind. Travellini goes by hand. Sherman back to Travellini, who squares the footy to a dangerous position. Was well attacked by Boris and South Bar now escape. Tumbled forward, but only as far as Braden Ham on the wing. We just kept it on Harry Cunningham too. He's got a little bit of wrist injury there for St John. I got as the ball from Ham goes deep forward. Oh, golf in front. Took the mark in front of Sam Burke. Last line of defence for the Swans, as he's done so for most of the year and for a couple of years now. Rowan Goff and just positioned himself beautifully and took the mark. Wants to play on now. Does runs across 
the face of goal comes broadcast side lot wide kick to Mawson has to go up does he take the mark he does that is a good mark on the boundary line Hamlin Hanger really in front of Jack Blood and also Charlie Sprague he goes short with the kick to Boris just the required distance at defensive 50 tries to bring it in board oh great play Sherman chopped it off one hand back inside terrible kick off the boot Loftus tried to make it good now it comes to Goff he's under pressure but don't argue the umpire comes in oh hold held to him lucky very very lucky Rowan Goff turned into trouble and we'll have a ball up 45 out from St Mary's goal. Just keep an eye on uh, Harry Cunningham down there, Birchie, for St John of God. I'll have to stand over yeah, there. And have a ball up. Yeah. Tossed up. True centre-half forward for St Mary's. Boris chisels one to half forward towards Broughton, who just soccers one forward, but there's no one in support for him. It's all St Mary's. Sprague's first there. Burke to Ham. Usually good at this part of the game, and that's no exception. Kicks on his non-preferred right, but still finds Damien McMahon at centre-half back. He plays on, arches the back as he does, kicks as long as he can, and it's a good kick too. And finds Loftus on the stretch, who marks just inside 50. We'll call it 45 out from home. So Loftus, Birchie, just an update on Harry Cunningham down there. Did you see him come off the ground with that wrist? Yeah, he was holding that right wrist, um, perhaps just a stinger as he was um, going to spoil that ball, but I'll just go and um, check out if it's anything more serious. Thanks, Birchie. Injury update. Thanks to St John of God. We put you first. What are you doing? So Loftus on the runway now. Kicks from just inside 50 by the time he makes contacts. Just hanging out, hanging out to the right-hand side, through for a minor score. St Mary's 1-2-8. South Bowen, who kicked the first through Jackson Carmody. Just one straight, 11 and a half gone on the Bowen Foods time clock. So Starkey kicks it in, finds Ethan Boris on the boundary line. He wants to bring it back towards whence it came. Rowan Goff takes a mark. Copley comes up on the mark, keeps the pressure on. So he's right in the last line of defence, Rowan Goff. Plays on now. Travellini comes at him. He just goes long, looking for Fraser Fort. Burke's against him. Off hands at the back. Right off through the middle. Nearly had it and then kicked off the ground. I think Jack Blood kicked it out of bounds on the full he did. And just came off his boot as he was running towards the boundary line. So, Mocky Wiedemann's going to take the free kick for South Barland. Uh, defensive 50 along the line. Big pack there. Big uh, hands go up. Broughton at the back. Tries to break free. Does. Got the handball free as well. Towards Carmody. Handball over the top. Oh, chopped off though. Chip Connors. Beautiful at half back. And then chips the ball to Braden Hammer, who's brought his own footy this afternoon. He handballs it away to Damien McMahon. Has to sit and wait a little bit. Handball through the middle. Was a beautiful to Case. Case now long kick inside 50. Back. Third in line. Stood there. Read it the better. Went over the back. Weed and Austin Shepard lost him. Got a bit of separation. And Michael uh, Sam Burke has taken the mark 30 out directly in front and again Kirsch great work from the half back line well you don't often see that a winger handball to another winger because they <laughs> usually stay in their own channels but Braden Ham over to Damien McMahon and inside forward 50 for, for a kick on goal so Sam Burke to finish off the good work from up the ground he comes in right foot kick or oh, the goal umpire has had to go a fair way and he's missed it to the near side and through for one behind so they go to 1-3-9 now St Mary's South Bar one straight six Harvey Norman K-Rock first quarter scoreboard think Harvey Norman for all the big brands at Geelong's best prices Starkey plays on for South Bar drives it as far as he can big pack of players formed comes to ground level Kelly he's tough in and under he was caught with the footy Holding the ball. St Mary's have brought the heat early. Keist rewarded. He goes inside 50 straight to the hot spot. Driver had to sit and wait. Dropped the mark. Sat in front of Rudd who is coming quickly. And we'll have a ball up directly in front of the St Mary's goal. 40 outs. Just getting the game on their own terms here. Nearly 14 minutes in on the Barn Foods time clock. First term. Minchin wins it down. Went looking for Garner and missed him. Kelly out of the stop he's just kicks with space and touch more than anything and he, he might get it too as Mawson ushers Harry Ling over the boundary nearly ends up on uh, one of the backyard of the houses but the barrier saves him it'll be tossed in just forward of centre wing on the outer side for St Mary's Max Mawson's copping a bit over there too from the St Mary's reserves players who position themselves on centre wing there. Now Callick gets it down for St Mary's as well from the ruck contest, but only as far as McDonald Ling off a step. St Mary's go around the corner towards half forward. Burke pushed past it by the Evangelist. He gets it. Huggins handball. Had a good game last week. Now Shepard back into the middle. Ham. Fort's there as well. Works through. Big man gets it on the out. That's a beautiful kick to Carmody. Takes the mark on centre wing and runs now. Open half forward flank. Goes with the right foot kick 
inside. Caldo to go up. Doesn't hit him, though, at the back. Burke and also McDonald. McDonald's got it. Goes out wide. Good, good play at the back again. They just settle things down, and Damien McMahon takes it at half back. He does. He goes short to Keast, who's been busy early, as you'd expect. Played a fortnight ago for where a bit missed out yesterday. That's an ordinary kick. Gives Carmody a, a good look at it. Might have given away the free kick in his eagerness to cut across Nick Connors. And Connors will take the free kick at half back. In his own still in his own defensive 50, Nick Connors. The grand final hero, of course. He likes it when you bring that up. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? It's a beautiful looking kick towards Minchin. who went up with the one hand and nearly brought it down. Won himself the free kick, and Maishman takes the advantage, drives it inside 50. Was a wobbly old kick. Kelly's there with Copley, who brings him to ground. That was good pressure from the little South Bar and live wire, and the ball out of play. But it's inside once more. The St Mary's 50, 45 out. So St Mary's 139, Lee South Bar, one straight six. We've played 16 in this first turn, Bar on Foods time clock. Boundary throw in. In Samaria's attack again. Minchin pushed past it. Callet took it down. Handball. Missed the target. Madigan comes back the other way. Copley put some pressure on as well. Pack still there. Madigan tried to get the handball. That was at a throw. The umpire said no. Comes back to Sherman. Got one high. Just slipped over at the right time too to get it. And there's a little bit going on. It's centre half 4-2 now between the two teams. And, but Zach Sherman's going to get up with the ball. And he's going to have a set shot for goal from 50 out directly in front. Oh, we knew we kicked the distance anyway. Absolutely. Saw that just before. Just, they need it. They need one, don't they, Samaris? They've had a they little a bit, don't they? Yeah. yeah, they've had a lot of ball in time or time in forward half. Uh, they just need to hit the scoreboard. They defended really well, South Barwon. So this is the one they just need to reset, get it back to the middle, and go again. Zach Sherman for Samaris second comes in 50 out right foot kick. Goal umpire doesn't move this time. Straight over the head. So. Zach Sherman gets his second, and he gets Samiri's second as well this afternoon. And they go to 2-3-15. They lead South Bar on one straight six. Harvey Norman, K-Rock first quarter scoreboard. I think Harvey Norman for all the big brands at Geelong's best prices. You talk about you want the ball and the ball user's hands, particularly in transition, coming through the middle of the ground. But the other end of the ground, you want the ball in blokes like Zach Sherman's hands. He's probably one of the most experienced footballers out there. Over 200 games of footy at GFL level. He's uh, an absolute masterclass in front of goal. And I don't know what his uh, finals record would be without looking at it, Kirsch, but it seems to me that the bigger the occasion, you can always rely on him to, to perform in the big games. Absolutely, and the, the luxury of just having him forward now. The, uh, we, we've seen him many years ago through the midfield, and he was a dominant footballer, but now just sitting him forward, he's so dangerous. Back underway, Garner with the clearance to centre-half forward through the hands of Loftus, who was opposed to Jack Driver. O'Neill to Hughes under some serious pressure. St Mary swarmed. Weedman clears for the time being to the wards of the wing. Rainer got a fist in only as far as Todd White, who's forced to kick under some heat on his left foot and kicks it out in the full. And the jeers from the uh, St Mary supporters on the outer side let him know about it, as you'd expect. Ling goes short to Rainer, who was called to play on. Didn't go the required distance. Looked far enough to me. But uh, I think he was caught by surprise, Keaton Rayner, but it'll be tossed up just forward of centre wing for South Barwon. Some injury concerns for South Barwon. Harry Cunningham, he's back on the field, but he doesn't look comfortable with that uh, right wrist. And Taylor Myron, he's just come off favouring his right shoulder. OK, so we'll uh, get on to that. Thanks, Birchie for A&B quality shelving. The injury update there for St John of God. Goes to the outside now on centre wing for St Mary's. Zach Sherman gets it long. Loftus puts the hands up and Driver. And they're having a good battle, aren't they? Loftus and Jack yeah. Driver. Loftus in front and Jack just doing what he does best behind. It's and probably, he saw it over. It's probably a good matchup because he's a jumping Jack Loftus and, and Driver likes to stay at home and take those intercept marks. So it's a really good matchup, that one. So throwing right half forward, Samaria's into attack on the outer side. Callet in front, Minchin comes in, gets it, gets a hand to it. Chalcraft gets uh, one high, the umpire, he made sure he saw it too. Okay, Chalcraft, he's got the ball now, just four to centre wing. High kick inside 50, big pack develops, coming Rudd from behind at the front though. Hughes for South Bowen, back to whence it came on centre wing on the outer side. Oh, that's a great mark by Caldu, plays on, he's got Fort short. He narrowed it, he had nothing else. So Fraser kicks around the corner, just wants somebody to run onto it. Mawson is the man. Will it sit for him? He's going at it. It does. He's on the wrong side. Right foot. Great play. Great play in the back. Defensively, there was two on two. There was Elliot McDonald coming across. And getting there was Harry Ling. And he put the tackle on and just was able to force the ball out of bounds. And it will be a throw in in the right forward pocket for South Barwon. 
That's the stuff that wins your finals, Kirsch. Absolutely it is. Uh, Harry Ling was just had to get him with that one hand and got him. It was fantastic. Tossed in. Fought doing the relieving ruck duties against Minchin this time. Brought and he's dangerous in these situations. Went looking for the free kick. Wasn't there. And then dives on the footy. And the ball was 20 out from the South Barland goal. They trail 2-3, 15 to 1 straight 6. 20 minutes tick by on the Barland Foods time clock. First term. Minchin being dominant in the ruck early. Ball still in front of goal for South Bow and Mawson getting busy. Hughes loops a handball just in hope towards Caldo. Gets his handball clear only as far as Sherman. He's also started well, just dumps it out of trouble. But Stark is the only man there for South Bow and he marks. Looks up. Goes very short. It's good enough. They go inside 50 through Madigan towards four. Two had three to beat, nearly pulled it down. And the ball goes out of play 30 around from the South Barland goal. So throw in, South into attack. Only 21 played first term in this first semi final at West Oval. And it will be a throw in for Minchin and Caldo in front. Caldo brought it to the front of the pack as well. Burke sends off the pack and gets it, handballs to nobody in particular. Sets the task. Oh, somewhere, somehow they stole it, St Mary's. They go towards centre half back with a kick. Stark, he puts some pressure on, but it falls to Chalcraft. Runs through centre wing, open in the forward line. In front, Rudd, Goff, punched it away and got a hand to it. Rudd was there again. Loftus throw, Travellini there as well. Outside of the right foot, he's missed. And Harry McMahon says, I was in the goal square, but Travellini had plenty of opportunity to try and kick that he just missed and threw for one behind they go to 2 4 16 now samaris that leads out bar one straight six harvey norman k-rock first quarter scoreboard certainly enjoying some time in their attacking half st mary's after jackson Carmody kicked the first for south Barn inside the first couple of minutes had the ball inside for 50 17 times buzz for six scoring shots so shows you how well south Barn are actually rebounding and defending well there we go stats with matt kershaw thanks to kers high 100 percent locally owned and operated in geelong as the ball's out of play in neutral territory on this broadcast side on the wing it'll be brought in we'll get back down to birchie in a minute to get an update on taylor mulraney and harry cunningham certainly would be a blow if they lost two inside the first quarter. Callum went without it. Rayner came flying through the stoppage but couldn't gather cleanly. There's a whistle but nothing doing. It'll be thrown up yet again. Still on the, the wing. Broadcast side. Minchin being good to start this one. Garner and Noble go at it. Garner uses that big frame but then he's brought to ground by Middleton. Another ball up. She's pretty hot in the contest, Kirsch. Absolutely. Well, the number one and two teams, yeah. as we mentioned pre-game, the clearances, so we know it's going to be hot around that ball. Through Middleton's legs. Uh, Garner's in there as well. Picks it up. He just handballs it. The who just handballs it over his head. Oh, Callick comes in and takes it off Kelly O'Neill. Their teammates. He gets it to Paddy Kelly around the corner. Fort pushed past it by Sprague. Burke's there as well. Sprague comes back. Fort nearly picked it up. Sprague did the other way. Did well. Got the kick towards half forward. Big pack there. Coming out. Driver can't take the mark. Travellini rode the bump at half forward and will hold the ball up. And Samaria's another attacking a 4 eight. They're going to have a ball up at, at uh, half forward. On the broadcast side, northern end of the ground. Minchin comes down, Callet against him. And Minchin gets it down, falls in the arms of Maishman, straight into the arms of Todd White. He's wrapped up, not getting away from Dion Johnston. And there'll be another ball up inside forward 50 for Samaria's. 23 and a half gone, first term on the Barn Foods time clock. Falls to Boris, who was stripped of it, and Ping for holding the ball. He was trying to exit half back. Maishman, the recipient for St Mary's. He'll drive it inside 50, straight to the hot spot. Big pack of players for him. It falls to Garner, just fell on his lap on the goal line. He bursts forward, Jared Garner, and all by himself kicks a gimme, and St Mary's have their third. He's uh, better for the run last week, Kirsch, I reckon, Jared Garner. Oh, absolutely. He's like a... This stage of his career, he's just like a racehorse. Needs that run one that one run back and uh, away he goes. He, uh, he's a very, very clever footballer. He knew exactly where that was going. He was the only one in the in the forward line that knew where that was going. That's probably the goal that they needed just to get out that 16-point buffer. Um, like we said, they've had the 19 inside forward 50 for seven shots, so they probably needed to get a couple before the, the break. So Mary's 3-4-22, South Bar 
by one straight six back in the middle. Damien McMahon off the wing, handball, forward of centre circle, falls towards Copley. He's got Keast in support. He picks it up, handball to Sherman, who's been dangerous. He's handball, chopped off by the evangelist. He comes back, Huggins. He's going to be under pressure, though, now. He gives it to Harry McMahon, who then has to go and tackle him, Lockie Wiedemann. And we're going to have a ball up about 30 out from the Samaris goal. So in dangerous times again for the Swans' defence. Mission gets it down. Copley through the middle. Huggins the other way. Just threw it away to Middleton. He gave it towards Wiedemann. Still in the spute. Uh, still 30 out. In the goal. And the, band, the central umpire will have to come in and ball it up again. So just under pressure, the Swans. Can't get it out of their defensive 50. And... St Mary's forwards just lurking. Now driver. He gets wrapped up as well. He went straight to ground with Dion Johnson. And we have another third ball up inside St Mary's forward 50. They're 3 4 22. They lead South Bar one straight six. Well, there's 24 players inside that forward 50 at the moment. And there's only 12 out. So she's really congested in there. Maishman finally gets some space, but attracted some attention pretty quickly. Copley came weaving through, went looking for Ham by hand. He went without it. Big scrum of players just trying to get it forward. South Bow and try to emerge with it. And they earn themselves a high tackle free kick going to Paddy Kelly. No surprise. Likes it in and under. Been a revelation since joining the club. And no surprise they got him high. Absolutely. Now he's, uh, he's vertically challenged. He is. <laughs> Starkey. Out of side. Centre wing goes to half forward. Burke like the way he started. Callet, his handball was chopped off. Ball's just forward of centre wing for South Barwon. And Callet is brought to ground. We'll have another ball up. Not good news for Taylor Mulroney. He's in a lot of pain sitting on the bench. Uh, they've strapped it up, but whether he'll take any further part is uh, questionable. Thanks, Birchie. For loss for him, if that's the case. For John God, we put you first here. Big loss for South Barwon early in this game. Free kick found from the contest. Paddy Kelly's got it again. So just forward of centre wing goes towards half forward. Burke in front, Caldo. And the skipper. Takes the mark and wants to play on quickly. 40 from goal. Up towards Fort. Hill Ling comes across. Great mark. Hamlin hanger contender from Harry Ling. He just came across the front of Fraser Fort and took the mark in the last line of defence and saved some areas again. And he goes with the kick towards Damien Martin. It's a good kick too. And just inside defensive 50 held up by Max Mawson. So again, some areas defence holding sway. He goes short to Nick Connors. Chip still got it at half back. So he wants to just hold up the play. Now he goes to the middle of the ground. That's a good kick if it goes to go. Oh, Garner worked his way to the front. Just muscled his way in, gave the handball away. To Ham, who runs past Callet, goes with a kick inside 50. It's out towards the half-forward flank. Mark taken at the back, though, by Hughes. He's had a good first term as well for South Bar, and he's going to relieve the pressure. He goes in the middle of the ground. Good-looking kick to Middleton, who had the height advantage. Takes the mark. Big responsibility on his shoulders in the middle of the ground now. Kirsch, if Moroni is indeed done, and the kick was chopped off by Rayner. Did a superb job to swoop in and keeps the ball in play. And arches the back, kicks to the hot spot. This would be something special if it could sit for Rudd. Huggins with the relieving fist and gets it through for a rush behind. But Keaton Rayner Kirsch with a bit of individual brilliance. Fantastic effort out there. I'll tell you what, that would have been one hell of a goal, wouldn't it? They had gone not from him, but at least a goal assist. 3-5-23 St Mary, South Barn 1 straight, 6-28 going on the Barn Foods time clock, all thanks to Harvey no on the Harvey Norman and Karai Warm Pond's first quarter scoreboard. So Starkey from full back for South Barn to the outer side. Paul Keldo comes in. I think the driver got a hold or a push, did he? No, he's playing at the St Mary's. It's against Fraser Ford, is it? It is, Damien McMahon. So, no, Nick Minchin. So he was in the middle with Ford in that contest. Gives it away by hand to a standing start. McMahon, it was chopped off, though, by Kelly. Now back to McMahon, who tries to get around. He gets it to Hamish Burke off a step at centre wing. Inside 50 again. They need a mark. Rudd goes up way too early, and Goff read it the better. And he's just like plucking... Just plucking... Uh, coconuts off a tree really for him he just goes up and just goes there we go i'm just going to have that one and he just took another in intercept mark and goes long with the kick outside back 50 but there's just kicked a kick at the moment because rowan golf has kicked it straight back and damien McMahon will have another kick inside 50 he does plays on drives it to the hot spot yet again big pack forms comes off hands mashman's lurking rudd gets his handball clear sherman for his third on the outside of the boot not quite. Oh, well, just short. Couldn't quite get the ball to work for him. But St Mary's, it was 
All them in the first term after Jackson Carmody kicked the first. They finished 3 5 23. The Saints, South Bowen, one straight six at quarter time. So that is quarter time here in the first semi final. St Mary's 3 5 23. They lead South Bowen, one straight six. Birchie head out. Listen to the coaches at quarter time, and we'll be back. Great clash this afternoon. Winner to place in Joey's in the prelim next week. Loser out for season 2024. We're here for APCO Cafe 24 7. Hot chips, only four bucks. Live, breathe. K Rock Football. I'm running the laps you get when you're late for training. I'm doing this lap so you can get to training safely. Because late is always better than never. Being late isn't the end of the world. For causing a road crash by going even a little bit over the limit, could be. This lap so, so you can all get the footy in back safe. This lap. This lap. This lap. This lap is so you can show up for your team and slow down on the road. There is literally no reason you just speed. So this lap, so you don't have to rush. Hang on. Why am I running laps? I'm retired. Toyota Genuine Toe Ball? Dad, here it is. Designed and tested by Toyota. Oh. We might need to take this Toe Ball out for a test drive. Mm. Good thinking. Find your O at your local Toyota dealer with a $1,500 finance deposit bonus across the Hilux range. Toyota. Stay focused. We're just here for a toe ball. A Toyota Genuine toe ball? Dad, here it is. Designed and tested by Toyota. Oh. We might need to take this toe ball out for a test drive. Mm. Good thinking. Find your O at your local Toyota dealer with a $1,500 finance deposit bonus across the Hilux range. Toyota.
intercept mark, South Barwon, obviously fantastic. Six versus three in that area. Rowan Goff down back has been superb. Clearances, we said they're the one and two team in the competition. 11-9 in favour of St Mary. So pretty even around the stoppages at the moment. It's just St Mary's getting that ball going from half back or sort of like their back half into forward 50 through transition pretty easily at the moment. So uh, St Mary's got their noses in front, but South Barwon won't be too disappointed, I reckon, by the gap of only 17 points at quarter time. Thanks, Kirsch. And the experts chair, thanks to the Sporting Globe, Eat, Drink, Sport, Rory Street, Geelong. And uh, both teams in their quarter time huddles. Birchie's at Luke Rayner's at quarter time. And so she'll try and get him as they come off the ground. As we said, winner to play St Joey's next week in the prelim. And either way, that's going to be a big clash, Kirsch, for a spot in the grand final. Absolutely. I think there'll be uh, Ron Watney's coaching staff will be here hoping they punch the absolute suitcases <laughs> out of each other today. And there's a, a couple of, uh, you don't want people to get injured, but uh, obviously a couple of sore players going in to next week. Speaking of injuries, obviously Taylor Mulraney, uh, as Joe, Jane mentioned, has probably got that shoulder injury at the moment. We're hoping he is uh, fit enough to come back out. He's a really important cog in um, South Barwon's midfield uh, buzz because he's that grunt. He's the in and under. He gets the ball to the outside, and uh, as we mentioned, they're so important with contested possessions and clearances. South Barwon rely on players like him. They do. Well, uh, Birchie's going down. She's got Luke Rayner next to her, the Samaria's co-coach. Down to you, Birchie. Luke, that was a reasonable start with the breeze. What did you make of that? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, listen, they obviously had a couple of opportunities as well into the breeze, so we feel like we can score into it also. Um, but no, I think in terms of sort of the key metrics that we're looking for, the boys started well. Um, we missed a couple of gettable shots, but that's life, that's footy, so we move on and now a good challenge into the breeze. Yeah, different different game today. Uh, different game this quarter, sorry, uh, going into the breeze. Um, you'll throw a few uh, key marking targets targets back perhaps at some point? We'll just mix it up a little bit so we'll put Berkey back behind the footy now on Caldo. Um, yeah, we've got some opportunities there where we can roll a plus one if we need to but yeah, the main point at this time is to keep back in our midfield group into play a front half territory. Thanks so much. Good luck. Thanks Berkey. Thanks to Luke Rayner, co-coach Samaris down there. Boundary side? This is what I'd like to see in local footy, Jace. I'd like to see 666 because it would have taken away yesterday that plus one for the entire last quarter. Well, well the, entire taken, game. the entire game yeah, was absolutely. a plus one of the Gen. So I'd like to see that introduced into local footy. I mean, you can obviously manipulate the plus one when the game's in play, but, you know, it gives yourself a centre break clearance to get it inside your forward line, 1v1, 6v6 ahead of the ball. Oh, anyway, right. just Spe my two cents worth. Expect Ed will be expecting a phone call from you, Kirsch, tomorrow morning just well, to put that on the table. We saw it yesterday. It sort of uh, influenced <laughs> the game a bit, didn't it? So... And Kirsch, the, the move to, to put Burke behind the ball on Caldo this quarter. Smart move. He's a, uh, you know, he's a he's a defender at, at heart and uh, he's gone forward and kicked goals this year, but I think it's not a bad move. Although, in saying that, I thought uh, they did a pretty good job first quarter of defending the high ball coming in. Only the nine times, but they did it enough. They only got the one opportunity uh, to score. So, yep, 50-50 on that one, whether it's uh, is going to influence too much. It's matchups thanks to Wombat Gully Plant Farm. See the team at Wombat Gully for all your gardening needs as we're back underway for the second term, second semi. It's St Mary's 3 5 23 to South Barn. One straight six as we get underway. Chalkcraft throws a boot at it out of the centre circles. Didn't get it far as Callet rips him to ground. Amazement it was, in fact. Uh, McMahon, excuse me, will have a repeat stoppage. Early stages. Tossed up. It favours Minchin, who won it down. Tumbled forward for St Mary's. Hughes is there at centre half back. Kicks up, forced to kick on his left side. He's not preferred, and it's a bit of an inverted torp. Driver attacks it hard against Ham at half back. Brings him to ground. We'll have another ball up right in front of us. Best seats in the house, thanks to Apco Cafe 24 7. Hot chips, only four bucks at Apco Cafe. So a ball up Callet Minchin. Oh, Minchin got to, gets a hold, but the umpire says play on Keast in the middle. Not going anywhere there. Callet comes back in, help out the tackle for Dor Madigan. And we're going to have a ball up still at right half forward for Samaris. Thrown up now. Minchin keeps his pace. Or Callet with a big round arm. Ham rides the Cali tackle. Got rid of the handball as well. Coming at it, Johnston. Blind turn, Cunningham. Recovered it and looks good. Gets it away to Madigan on the left. Johnston down the ground late on Madigan. And it's going to be a free kick to South Bowen. Jonty Broughton's going to take it, I think, on centre wing once it comes back to him. So, Matty Lewis out the back of the box too. Runaway Lou, for goodness sake. There's too many Lewises around here today. Broughton goes to the right foot kick along inside 54. Oh, is that a hold? The umpire said yes, it was. And Fraser had two on him. 
He just strides back like, yep, that was my free kick. Yep. Yep. Well, they got a bit nervous because of that high ball coming in. So yep. that's the advantage of having him as a focal point inside your forward 50. They get nervous. If they can't get a run and jump at it to defend him, they've got to go one-on-one. -on -one. That's not where you want to be with Fraser Fort. And uh, they get panicky. They grab, they hold. They do anything they can to try and stop him. So 40 out directly in front. Good start for the second term. If you can put this through for South Bow and he comes in, right foot kick. Goal umpire just says, yes, Fraser, you've done that nicely. And it's his first second for the Swans. They go to two straight 12. And they trail Samaria 3 5 23. Morris Business Class Finance, K Rock, second quarter scoreboard. Well, that's the importance I've just mentioned that then about how important he is in that forward line. But like we said, we can, he can go back if he has to be that plus one behind the ball later on if things get tight in the game. He can even come onto a wing and play that role. So he's got that variety in his game and he's so important. He is the X factor in this competition. Absolutely. Not many six foot ten defenders running around Kirsch. Oh, all wingers. <laughs> all wingers or, or anyone, really. Correct. He's a uh, big human. A grumpy one, but big. Oh, not Callet. a happy man at all. One wins it down to white, but there's a whistle from the non officiating authorities going South Barwon's way. Couldn't quite see what that was for, but it's Pat Kelly. Must have been for a hold, I assume. He kicks from the back of the centre circles. Here is Fort. Had a couple to beat. Falls towards Broughton, who has to sit and oh. wait for it. Wins it back and he dribble it through. He doesn't. It hits the padding. Minor score as he went to check side from 15 out. Would have been two in a minute for the Swans, not to be. 2-1-13, St Mary's 3-5-23, three, three minutes gone, Barn Foods time clock. So Bradenham plays on from fullback for St Mary's, kicks it broadcast side, doesn't really go very far with the breeze. It comes back to Broughton again, tries to ride the bump, gives it away to Carmody who runs past and kicks the goal. Jackson Carmody. Puts it through for his second of the afternoon, and that is two in a minute. The turnover from the kick in from Braden Ham, and that they made them pay there. South Bow and Jackson Carmody's second goal of the afternoon, 3 1 19, and they close the gap. Samaris 3 5 23. Morris Business Class Finance, K Rock, second quarter scoreboard is Asset Finance by Geelong people for Geelong people. Call 1 300 for Morris and Kirsch. That's all it takes, doesn't it? Two quick goals, and they're back in it. Absolutely. We, we spoke about it at the break how well they would be happy about how they defended that quarter and taking your opportunities in front of goal that St Mary's didn't. They missed a couple, but Braden Ham is probably the best player in the, on the ground in the first quarter and he'd be wanting to take that kick back again, I'd reckon. Back underway, Keast tries to just bullock his way through, but it's Todd White who tumbles one forward towards his captain, Caldo, centre-half forward, falls towards the goal kicker, Carmody, who tries to track the bouncing footy inside 50. Does so now, but just couldn't gather it cleanly under some Sherman pressure, who wants it. Free kick for out in the full, nothing doing. It'll be tossed in. 30 around from South Bowen's goal. He'll make an early inroads here, second term. Trail by four. Kick the opening two of this second term. Tossed in, Minchin and Caldo go to work. Minchin wins it down again, but no advantage. It'll be tossed up quickly again. They'll do battle. Caldo and Minchin. One down, Rayner was brought to ground without the footy. The ball is tumbled forward, but again, out of play. Five metres around from the South Bowen goal. So, throw in. South into attack. Fort was going to go the ruck, but I think Keldo might you know, do some roving work. Minchin against Caldo. Oh, Fraser over the back. Dangerous. Falls into the goal square. Free kick. It's going to be a hold, and it's going to be a Samaris free. It's going to be Braden Ham. No, it's not. It's going to be Nick Minchin, who ran away. Have to come back and give it back to Braden Ham, probably by hand. He does. He runs to the back pocket, gets around a couple. Under pressure, though. Handball. All fought comes towards Ling. Now Burke back towards Garner off a step. He goes towards half back in front. Kelly O'Neill, no mark. And Copley got one high free kick already, though, for a hold. It's going to go back, I think, to Chalkraft, and he'll take the free kick. At left half back for Samaris. He's got Sherman short. He ignores that. Bright sunshine here at West Oval too now. It's still breezy though. He kicks towards centre wing. Big pack there. Front and centre was great from Copley. Gives it away by hand to Garner. Inside 50 with an inside torpedo punt coming out. Loftus goes back towards 50. Copley tried to tap it on. Ham gets back on the ham ball towards Garner. Tracks it. Can't pick it up though. Inside 50 for St Mary's. He got Hamish Burke in support. Goes to Harry McMahon. Shuffles the handball to Garner. He goes towards the goal. He kicks it. Jared Garner. And he's worth everything. He tells everybody about it too. His second of the afternoon. And a reply and a response from St 
St Mary's. They go to 4 5 29 and they lead South Bar on 3 1 19. Morris Business Class Finance, K Rock, second quarter scoreboard. Yeah, Harry McMahon very clean, but what they had, they had layers of front and centers there. St Mary's, it's like they had their first layer of small forwards that had gone past the ball, and then the next layer was a midfielder coming in behind. And obviously, Jared Garner was a recipient of the handball, but clean is what you need to be, and that's what Harry McMahon was. Got the handball up to Garner. He doesn't miss too many of those. We've seen that so many times, hundreds of times, in fact. A couple to Jared Garner, a couple to Zach Sherman. What a luxury to have those two just floating forward whenever they like. And they're back underway. Hughes just dropped the footy, but nothing doing. Boris on the outside, forced to kick a funny little check side towards Mawson. Missed him. And he's happy to see it over and out of play on centre wing broadcast side. Just repeating that score. St Mary's 4-5-29. Ten-point lead over South Barwon. 3-1-19. Seven and a half gone. Second term, Barwon Foods time clock. Hope you're enjoying the call on catrockfootball.live as there's a whistle. The back of the stoppage going the way of St Mary's. I think it Mitch. is. It's going to mention, in fact. Didn't even know it was his free. A lot of holding at the there moment. Is. Yeah. So I think he's just too hard to move. So he's he's doing a lot of reaching and grabbing. He popped it up towards Harry McMahon, but fisted away by driver and out of play. I tell you what, I have noticed a lot of mention when he gets the free kick, handballs to a stationary uh, player to his left or right, and they're not ready for it. Yeah. And he's put them under pressure four times. So I'm not really sure whether the players around him are aware that he's a ruckman who wants to handball. So boundary throwing short, Callet, and I think it's going to have to throw it in again. A little bit more work for the boundary umpire. It's been a hard three or four weeks for the boundary umpires with the boundary throw-ins. Well, that's right. We talk about the yeah, players absolutely. having to do these conditions. These, yeah. Some of them are young. <laughs> absolutely. The umpires. Yeah, there's still a couple traumatised from two weeks ago at St Joey's, I think, after that game. Yes. <laughs> boundary throw-in. That's better. Minchin gets it to the front. Hughes got a hand to it for South Bar and all a tackle on Middleton. Big from Maishman. Ball spills free, though. Chris Hughes kicked it out of bounds. Kicked it in the Ildy in the coach's box. And it will be a free kick to St Mary's at half-back. It's going to be Harry Ling with the footy once it comes back. Back. So we played uh, nearly nine minutes in this second term. Barred Foods time clock sells the freshest fish direct to you, Donga Road, North Geelong. Harry Ling will take the free kick, and it's Samaris by 10 points. Started well, Harry Ling. Very experienced player, despite his age, of course. Just drives it to the wing. Callet with front spot, couldn't mark for South Barwon. Falls to Maishman. Who's tackled quickly, we'll have another ball up. In plenty of them early stages. Tossed up quickly. We're on centre wing, broadcast side. Minchin wins it down. And as far as Middleton, Kelly was very clean, but his handball misses Madigan and Cunningham. And the ball once again out of play. Looks like Birchie Mul Mulraney is definitely done. Good to see Cunningham back out there, though, for a South Bowen perspective. Tossed in, Callet was favoured by it. Middleton on the turn, his kick was smothered. Kelly running out of room. Runs the ball over the line, and once again, the boundary umpire will go to work and toss it in on centre wing broadcast side. Bertie, down to you. I don't think I've actually seen Taylor Mulroney on the bench in this third term either. Are they down to three there for South Barwon? Yeah, that's right. So that he's uh, obviously just getting that checked out. He won't take any further part in the game. All right, thanks, Bertie. St John got an injury update down there. South Barwon, bad news for Taylor Mulroney. Ball from centre wing. Now Copley gets a kick towards Harry McMahon, who gets there in front of the evangelist, and he gets the kick on the outside towards Jack Blood, who takes the mark. Just forward of centre wing. Madigan stands the mark. He goes on the left towards half forward. He's going to stop and prop in front of Jared Garner, and Ethan Boris takes the mark. Called to play on. Has to get around a couple. Gets the kick away. Tumbling punt. Blood comes the other way. Oh, that's a great mark. Matty Keldu. Hamlin hanger on centre wing. He just took the mark and was flying and then got, got to the ground and just hung onto it and clung. And now he goes with the kick long towards the top of the square. Off the back. Oh, Fraser. Get around. Oh, the kick was smothered by Sprague. Great play by him. He needs some support, though. Coming the other way was Carmody. Now Minchin handballs it away. Punched back by Starkey. Falls into the arms of Connors. He loses it. Madigan doesn't, though, on the right foot. Foot, goes to Ford in the front and Fraser takes the mark and he's hard to move, big Fraser. He wanted 50, so did the crowd. And the umpire said, bugger off, it's not happening. And it will be a free kick, it uh, will be a mark and will be a set shot for Fraser, who has kicked one already and that is 40 out just left of centre. Well, every time a player looks up, you just see him directing where he wants it. And all you need to do is just put it in a couple of metres of him, I reckon, and he's a chance every time. He's an ungainly looking footballer. God, he gets it done, doesn't he? It's amazing. <laughs> Fraser, long, long sleeves, 
Grumpy as socks up. Here he comes. Right foot kick. You give him a... You know, oh. And he hits the post. Come on, Fraser. 1-1 one, one for Fraser Fort this afternoon. 3 two twenty. Now South Barwon, some areas 4 5 29. Morris Business Class Finance, K-Rock, second quarter scoreboard. Like he's a bit old school. There's only Dangerfield and Horn Francis in the AFL that wear their socks up. Even the Ruckman don't really go the socks up anymore. Wearing that do they? Shin guard, I yeah. suppose, but uh, he is your old school type. Put a bit of elastic band around or a tape <laughs> around his socks and away he goes. Caldo goes up early on the outer side. Callot shoots them up. This would be something for Callot. Just a bit skinny on the run. The big ruckman got a good piece of it. Through for a minor score. South Bowen 3 3 21. Eight point margin. They trail. St Mary's. It's a good effort by uh, big Ben Callot. Very mobile big man, at, as we know. So he brought in. Not much ahead of the footy for Ling, so he just stabs one. It's a funny-looking kick. Keys dropped on, he probably should have taken. Went looking for Mashman by hand. He got a case of the fumbles. Comes out to McMahon. His kick was partially smothered. The ball still inside. 50 for South Barn. Wiedemann dumped as he kicked to centre-half forward. Hughes flew, couldn't mark. Tumbled out. Who'll be first there? Cunningham's after it with Ling. And the former is... Uh, the latter, excuse me, is happy to see it over and out of play. We're still inside 50 to over South Barn. Left half forward, who trailed by eight as 13 minutes ticked by on the Bowen Foods time clock. Good pressure then from South Bowen. Keep the ball inside their forward sort of 60. And it's in now. Fort in the ruck contest. Takes it out of the ruck as well. Right foot kick. Oh, quickly go! Fraser Ford! And tells everybody about it too, Fraser. Yuck, Jace. Get out of the way. And I'll just do it all. Fraser puts his second on the board. Can't kick him from directly in front, but can kick him from taking out of the ruck. And Fraser 2, Jackson Carmody 2. And they draw the margin back again. They're 4-3-27. And they trail St Mary's 4-5-29. Morris Business Class Finance, K-Rock, second quarter scoreboard. Oh, he excites us, and there's a reason for it, because he can do a few things. He's like Joe Danaher a little bit, isn't he? He can ride the waves with him, and like you said, buzz off air. He's kicked the 40-odd points for the... 41. 41 for the year. 52-41. So 52-41 is a staggering amount of shots on goal for a big fellow who plays multiple roles. So back in the middle, Garner gets it away. Inside 50, ball fills balls to driver. Gets a clear kick. Oh, McMahon chased it and ran at it, but it didn't sit for him. And Boris, can he get around? He got gets uh, round one tackle on his handball towards uh, Noble. He left it behind, though, coming the other way. Then Samaris get it. McMahon just gets a shove as he gets the kick away. Might be okay. Garner takes it 60 that, from goal. Sorry, yeah. Jace, that wasn't good. Bit of bike track uh, action for a Samaris player over. That was a bad landing. It was too. We'll keep an eye on that for St. John at God. And I think it might be Ali McDonald over there, who's just getting up very gingerly. The ball in the end is still on centre wing on the outer side and it will be. Sorry to jump in JC, just trying to tackle and he um, just the momentum took him into the bike track and he hit the deck hard. Unfortunately there's only a water boy over there too, it's not a trainer or anything so he didn't really help him much. He is back on his feet though, Ali McDonald, which is good to see, hope he's okay. Minchin wins it down. Boris just charges through, made some space, and then drives it to the hot spot. There's a whistle and going the way of South <laughs> Bowen. And guess who, Kirsch? Fraser it's Grumpy Cat Fraser, who was pretty quick to put the uh, the hands up and say it's mine. And he did. He said, give me the ball. Yeah, the up ball was left. in no doubt who that was going Absolutely. to. Absolutely. And Fort will have the shot from goal, 35 out, directly in front. Not only kicking goals, he's just umpiring as well. He, is. he said, this is mine. He said, give me the whistle. I'll I'll do the rest. <laughs> but how good was Boris then? Just picked up the ball through some traffic and kicked it long and direct to the hot spot. In comes Fort. Straight in front. He's got it. And the Swans are back in front. And Big Fraser has three. And two in as many minutes. And they're just getting the game on their terms, the Swans here, Kirsch. They are, and again, it's around the contest. And that was a, a great example. Ethan Boris just gets the ball, takes them on, and gets it, drives it in long. I hope Jake's got a few photos of him absolutely driving that ball in deep. And big phrase, he can't get around him, can't get over him, he can't get under him. So you might as well just try and put a couple of players on him and try and defend him, I reckon. Bertie down you, Ali McDonald, just off the ground as well for St Mary's. Yeah, he has come off. The physio's walking with him. So they'll just give him a bit of a, an overall assessment, I feel. We'll keep an eye on that. Thanks, Bertie, for St 
John O'God. Uh, back in the middle. High kick up the chimney. Minchin's going to try and tap that on intelligently towards centre wing. Coming across, though, was Mawson for South Barwon. All held in. Umpire. Oh, holding the ball. Whack. And Copley advantage. Yes, he's going to pay it, I think. He's going to give it to Keast. Under pressure. 50 from goal. Driver. Just sat back there and read the play better, Jack. Don't kick it, Hamble. Don't kick it, Hamble. He did to Starkey. Oui. Well done. Starkey now goes out wide over the back two on one. South Bowen might be on the out, though. Hamble back in board. Mr. Taylor. Oh, Madigan turned around on the left. Did well. Inside 50. Fraser from behind this time. Fraser gets it. Kick around the corner. Open goal Don't square. Me, Which way is it going to be? Fraser has if you don't mind, and has told the crowd he has kicked his fourth. That is the Inspirations Paint goal of the afternoon. Watch your next project, 138 Torquay Road, Grovedale. Fraser Ford has turned the game on its head. Absolutely. He's kicked four himself, and they go to 6 3 39 now, South Barwon, and they lead some areas 4 5 29. Morris Business Class Finance, K Rock, second quarter scoreboard. Oh, this is reminiscent of Dale Parson one year, and he just turned the game on its <laughs> head in a quarter. Mind you, there was a grand final, but uh, bigger uh, stakes at that day, but what a performance so far from Fraser Ford. Dribbled that through from the better part of 50 metres out, and the ball just kept going in the right direction for him. We're back on the way. Fort has kicked four in the term, and in less than 10 minutes, I'm going to say, he is on fire. He was caught behind as well. His yep. second effort was fantastic. Minchin wins it down for St Mary's. The ball is at just at the uh, just forward of the centre squares for them as Shepard charges through for the Swans, as does Todd White. Arches the back, goes inside 50 again in the fourth direction. The ball evades him for the time being. He's bearing down on Ling, who stabs one towards Ham. I think it might have gone out in the full. Did he get a hand on it in time? He did just as the ball floated away from him, and they can get some respite. St Mary's, who trail 6 3 39 to. Uh, Fort 5, 29, as, as I mentioned, Fort has four in the term. South Bowen, uh, sorry, has three in the term. Carmody, the other goal kicker. One down, Middleton, a ground level, attracts a crowd quickly. O'Neill got his handball clear. Strong tackle from Trollcraft of another stoppage. Well, we spoke about the Sam Burke move, and I said I was 50-50 on it, Buzz, at the mm. break, because it's not exactly going to change a lot of things when you're playing on someone like Fraser Fort, and it's come to fruition that, you know, sometimes changing your structure may not always be the best answer. Pinched down to Keese. He got it towards Copley. Now kick off the ground by Harry McMahon. Through the middle, though, Austin Shepard for South Barwon towards half forward. Carmody fights hard for it. Ling gets it away. Johnston's handball was OK. Samari's out. Rayner goes wide, looking for the mark. And was that taken by Starkey and or Travellini. I think the umpire is going to give it to Jesse, is he? He is, and he's going to play on and run away at centre wing. Drives it long, kick was smothered though, and Madigan comes back to help out for South Bar and tries to get it out, the ball out. Samaris with the numbers, Rainer through traffic, got it away. Harry McMahon on the outside. Now they go inside. Sherman goes in with a kick to Loftus on the boundary line. In front of the scoreboard, wants to play on quickly. Top of the square, Ham. Has he got enough on it? Oh, punched away. Kelly, great work. Garner tried to tap it back towards Johnston. Back to Ham, his handball to Garner, off a step round the corner, it's all southbound fresh air shot, Goff handball, wants the safety of the boundary line, and I think he gets it as well, well done Rowan, and southbound under pressure, they see it over the line for a throw in. Garner nearly got in that same position again, he, yeah, just he loves it, it doesn't he? Clear swing at it. Such a clever player, Jared Garner a couple to his name, but he side trailed by 10, as 20 minutes tick by, on the Barwon Foods time clock, second turn, one down by Callot for South Barwon and then follows up at ground level, but gang tackled. The ball's pretty much directly in front of goal for St Mary's. 35 outs. 20 and a half gone. Tossed up again. Minchin taps it over the back to space. Chalkcraft comes bursting through and then lays a very strong tackle on Pat Kelly. Another stoppage. Ball locked in for St Mary's. Forward 50 for the time being. As all the players, apart from Big Fraser, condense into this half of the ground. Minchin won it down to Johnston with the flying shot. Can it curve back? It'll fall short, and Goff with the spoil does that part of the game extremely well. And it'll be tossed in a couple of metres around from the St Mary's goal. Well, they're the number one team in the 
competition for pressure acts. South Barwon, Samiri surprisingly number 11, but I suppose you got the ball a lot uh, throughout the season, Samiri, so lower ranked. The Andrew throwing, Kelly gets it down. Harry McMahon rows at the front. Huggins pushes past him. Kelly wants to save for the banjo line, finds it. And then just a breath taken by everybody here. It's been a bit of a phrase of fort quarter at the moment. He's transformed the game for the Swans. They're 10 in front. And we played 22 minutes in this second term. Boundary throwing. Minchin behind Garner. Read it. Couldn't take it though. Johnson over the top of it as well. Pack develops about 40 out from Samaria's goal. The umpire will come in and ball it up. So still another chance for Samaria's late stages of this second term. They'll be happy with this South Bowen. It's the fifth repeat stoppage. So Minchin gets it down. Rove though on the out by South Bowen. They get it through sets of hands. Boris gets a clearing kick towards centre wing. Pass fort. Watch out, Fraser. Harry Ling though gets back there. Fraser comes across. Gives it one over the top as well. Fraser to make sure he, he earned it. <laughs> now the ball has to, has to come back actually. And Fraser gave away the high tackle. Put his hand up for that one too. He did. Said I did it. He did. So he's umpired that one. Yeah. A free kick against himself. Umpiring himself. Yep. So he gets that from Neildy, I reckon. Neildy did a bit of umpiring when he played. Now the ball, centre wing on the outer side for St Mary's. Burke goes long with the kick towards 50. Big pack there. Oh, in front, take the mark. <laughs> They're just raffling at these blokes. Callot takes the mark this time for South Bowen at defensive 50. It was a good client by the big ruckman who stabs one across the face of goal to Starkey. Not a lot ahead, so just kicks long towards O'Neill, who has to jump from behind against Ham. Couldn't mark. Coming through Harry McMahon to Ling. He's been terrific. Damien McMahon. Minchin gets the one-two. McMahon on the burst from 60. Good-looking kick towards Copley. It's all about the bounce. It sits on its end. Away from the St Mary's goal. Travellini, the ball still alive. Ham wheels back onto his left side. A squaring ball is terrific. The vision is first class. And Jack Blood takes the mark directly in front. 15 out. Yeah, I'm not sure who that is on the mark. I can't see from here, but uh, really had the opportunity. Huh? Shepard. Yeah, Shepard really had the opportunity to go hard and impact then and decided against it. So probably thought he should have got some body on at least and made him earn the kick or the mark. So Jack Blood back in the team. His last game came in round 13 before an adductor injury sidelined him. The St Mary's skipper with a little settler. A captain's goal if ever there was one. Jack Blood marks his return with a goal, and to say they needed that curse is uh, staying the bleeding obvious. <laughs> Absolutely, and it was just Braden Ham again, just that little bit of lowering the eyes, great vision not to blaze away. Probably had the right on his left to maybe have a shot at it from 45, but lowered his eyes and got it into his marking options. But just further up the ground, just a little bit of a turnover. The kick from Starkey wasn't ideal, wasn't favourable to his teammates, and St Mary's had the numbers at ground, so they got some loose ball gets and got it inside their 450. Damien Mar was fantastic on a couple of the uh, receive, handball receives there and got it inside forward 50. Back in the middle, oh, Minchin with a big tap, tap down. Boris comes off the wing though, rides a bump, handball back in board to Chris Hughes. Handball was okay through the middle. The kick gets away Mawson towards half forward. Oh, Chip Connors reads it the better but can't take the mark. Straight lines it. They've got some support. Rainer's handball was elite. Got it to Ham. Wants to get back on the left. He, oh, he gets it. He runs a long way. Yeah, he runs a long way without bouncing there. He was moving and sideways and going. They want to play on South Bar and they get it to Hughes, who's had a good first half. Wheels around, goes long. Where's Fraser? On a lead, not going to get there. Oh, Caldo, take the raffle ticket, and he wins it. And the co math is a medalist. Takes the mark and will shoot for goal from 45 out, right of centre. Yeah, that's what Samiris want to do. They want to try and slow that entry down so that they aren't one-on-one. -on -one. They want to get... That's why at times there's been those free kicks, because they haven't been one-on-ones. That makes them nervous when they get the ball in there quick, and that's what South Barn have got to do. Just wheel and go, get it in there so you have got one-on-ones ahead of the ball. That's their strength, South Barn. Their aerial marking inside forward 50. Well, there's a bit of pushing show, and there's a whistle in 50. Matty Copley, I think, gave away the 50. Yeah, it was going on behind play for a while between Mawson and... And uh, Braden Ham and Maishman. Oh, and surprise, surprise, Jack's in there too. <laughs> Get your player out there. Get your player out of there, please. Uh, please uh, Come on, Jack. Caldo kicks the goal anyway. And South Bar on the back to a 10 point margin. A little 50. Norm said, I'm having none of this. Absolutely none of it. 
7 3 45 South Barwon. Samaris 5 5 35. Morris Business Class play. It's K Rock second quarter scoreboard. And the jeers of the crowd for Matty Copley as he comes off the ground as well. Yeah, the South Barwon faithful just letting him know. Thank you for a free goal. He loves it too, Matty. Look at him. Does, it doesn't bother Matty Copley. Don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, Neil, do you ring me about that tomorrow? They're good, they're good friends. <laughs> uh, good. Know, we've seen some good theatre in footy on the weekend. A little bit of a blow up, but. Uh... Yeah, a bit of crowd involvement uh, as always. Absolutely. Good to see. Back underway, entering red time in this second term. Noble just kicks on his left foot high up and under ball. Big pack forms. Fort. Guess who? Wheels from 45. Fraser Fort has kicked Fort in the quarter. How does he do that, the big fella? I'm in the corner to Fraser Ford. It is a one-man show. <laughs> it's a 16-point lead for South Barwon entering halftime. Maybe the change. Maybe they should just Hamish Burke stay instead of Sam Burke. They've got the wrong Burke on him, maybe. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, Sam Burke's probably saying, get me back up forward. I want to stay on this beast of a human. It's just the most ungodly looking kicking style. He just gets it done, doesn't he? Just, he just give gets him it the done. ball. Just, just give put him it the in ball. his area. He just, he I'll can, do the rest. You can hear the crowd erupt when the ball goes near him. We erupt, Jason. Oh, yeah. Kirsch, <laughs> take a pill. I love Bloff him. just gets it down for St Mary's. Tomation runs through the middle. 55 from goal. Boot Goff in front. Did well. Read the ball better, Rowan Goff. Just kept his eye on it and took the mark. In the end, it was pretty easy for him too. Last line of defence. And K Rock Zone takes the mark. Goes long outside 50. Mawson sets himself in front. Ham. Oh, Loftus as well. Got his hands to it for St. Mary's. Umpire Douglas comes in and he'll ball it up. In front of the best seats in the house. Thanks to Apco Cafe 24 7. Hot chips only four bucks. And we're going to have Callet and Loftus to do the ruck work. It's the South Barn Ruckman who wins it down. Garner probably could have got a free kick. And it... His jumper being held. Ball's inside 50 in the meantime. Shepard wrapped up quickly by Johnston. We'll have a ball up. 28 minutes tick by on the Barn Foods time clock. Second term just repeating that score. 51 plays 35. South Barwon's way. Ham dances through Middleton with the relieving smother and kick to the wing. Oh. Gee, that's a good mark by Harry Ling who has stood up in defence under some heat. He goes very short to his captain, Blood. Ling keeps running for him from centre-half forward. Inside 50, driver at the front, Goff with the fist away from Rudd. Ball comes to ground level. Boris has done some nice things his second term, and that's no different. Finds Pat Kelly, who plays on quickly, drives it to right half forward. Broughton's got the sit against Connors, drops the mark, keeps his feet, gets his handball clear to Cunningham, who's stripped of it. Good pressure from St Mary's. Connors to Ham. Garner in the middle of West Oval. Turns, and that's good composure, and mashman has got some space. Mashman now runs through wing, now goes to half forward, broadcast side, measures the pass. McMahon, the TV evangelist, was there. Travellini kick was smothered by driver doing everything, Jack. And uh, he'll be on an extra little wedge tonight. And Buzz might get a little bit of extra 10% for the player agency. You have never met a man who knows how many dollars and cents he earns. Tightest plug you've Jack. ever met, Jack. My goodness. <laughs> Battery throw in. That's what accountants do. 40 around from the South, from the Samaris goal. They need one before half time. Gripping game here. Callet gets it down. Mashman off a step. Top of the square. Who's going to mark it? There's five there. Front and set and Garner. Oh, off the back of the pack. Handball from Sprague was all right. Garner around the corner. Oh, the TV evangelist takes it through for one behind. Is it a mark? What's the umpire saying? It's a mark. I think no score so Huggins will clear the last line of defense for South Bay onto the outer side if he is going I don't know what's happening he has to go over his mark I thought he was behind his mark but anyway Huggins again for a third time to go to the outer side for South Barwon he plays on just goes for distance Caldo up early Burke with the fist from behind Boris came charging through, but left Rayner, who goes inside 50, but it's Ben Callett who marks and wisely decides against playing on. The big ruckman with Travellini bearing down on him. He's going to get some numbers on this side because his direct opponent, Minchin, is down the line, so he can't kick it to him. He kicks in that direction, as Kirsch mentions, to the wing. Here is Minchin, got a hand to it. Play away from... Todd White as half an hour ticks by in this second term on the Barn Foods time clock at South Barwon. 8 3 51 leading St Mary's 5 5 35. So I'll throw in Minchin up against Callet. They've had a ding dong battle this afternoon. The two Ruckman 
Kellett holding on again. Minchin got it down. Case to Rover. That's now on half forward. Handball to Travellini. Coming up to him was Driver. Kick around the corner was OK. Who's it going to hit it though? Boris comes back to help out. He's had a great second quarter. Boris, can he pick it up? No, he can't. Yes, he can. He gets it around. Oh, does well. Right foot kick. Clearance goes to the back. Hamish Burke at the back. Oh, can't quite take the mark. Got some support. Blood to Connors. Connors back towards half forward. Over the head of Boris. Falls to Todd White. Handball was OK to Madigan. South Bar on away now. Runs through centre wing. Goes towards Fort. He's got 74 players on him. It goes over the back. Comes towards Sherman, who's back there helping out. Goes towards centre wing. Caldo takes the mark. Plucks it. Swear South Bar and back in board. Measures the pass. Goes towards half forward. No mark taken. Hughes wrapped up. And Blood puts the tackle on. And we'll have a ball up at half forward for S- South Bowen. Tossed up quickly. Callet takes it out of the ruck. The big South Bowen man and gets a good piece of it too. But marked on the goal line. No score. It's all South Bowen. But more to the point, Kirsch. All Fraser fought five goals in the second term has the Swans in front at the main break. 8-3-51, they lead St Mary's, 5-5-35. You take a breath. It's half time, we will take a breath. <laughs> take a breath. In fact, we might, just before we go, we might see if Birchie can get somebody at half time as she heads out. And it's 8-3-51 South Bar and St Mary's 5-5-35. And seven goals, three in that quarter for South Bar when it was, uh, it was the Fraser Fort show. And Birchie's downstairs now, and I think she uh, might have Dorm Madigan. I'm running the laps you get when you're late for training. I'm doing this lap so you can get to training safely. Because late is always better than never. Being late isn't the end of the world. For causing a road crash by going even a little bit over the limit, could be. This lap so, so you can, can all get, get the footy in the back safe. This lap. This lap. This lap. This lap is so you can show up for your team and slow down on the road. <laughs> There is literally no reason for you to speed. So this lap, so you don't have to rush. Hang on. Why am I running laps? I'm retired. Toyota Genuine Toy Ball? Dad, here it is. Designed and tested by Toyota. Oh. We might need to take this Toy Ball out for a test drive. Mm. Good thinking. Find your O at your local Toyota dealer with a $1,500 finance deposit bonus across the Hilux range. Toyota. Stay focused. We're just here for a tow ball. A Toyota Genuine tow ball? Dad, 
Here it is. Designed and tested by Toyota. Oh. We might need to take this tow ball out for a test drive. Mm. Good thinking. Find your O at your local Toyota dealer with a $1,500 finance deposit bonus across the Hilux range. Toyota. Toyota Genuine Toy Ball? Dad, here it is. Designed and tested by Toyota. Oh. We might need to take this tow ball out for a test drive. Mm. Good thinking. Find your O at your local Toyota dealer with a $1,500 finance deposit bonus across the Hilux range. Toyota. Goal pressure on the Leopold defense. Burke tries to take it out. Oh, oh, stolen by Jared Carter, who runs into the goalpost. Nearly sends it flying into Church Street. But he's kicked the goal and he also put K Rock's own in there as well, I think. Hit by nine. Kellett gets it down. Side of the pack, Mole Rainey. Riccardi goes free. Handball over the top. Now the pigeon. Can he kick another one? The pigeon has kicked the goal! Tyler Pigeon! When it matters, he's kicked it. He's got the beak up and down. Do that. Insufficient intent paid. Keaton Rayner wants to spot up Garner. Has he got enough on it? Flying was Elliot McDonald. Here's Elliot McDonald on ground. Elliot McDonald snaps and goals. And they're back within 15. I'm running the laps you get when you're late for training. I'm doing this lap so you can get to training safely. This light is always better than never. Being late isn't the end of the world. For causing a road crash by going even a little bit over the limit, could be. This lap so, so you can, can all get, get the footy in the back safe. This lap? This lap. This lap. This lap is so you can show up to your team and slow down on the road. There is literally no reason for you to speed. So this lap, so you don't have to rush. Hang on. Why am I running laps? I'm retired. Toyota Genuine Toy Ball? Dad, here it is. Designed and tested by Toyota. Oh. We might need to take this tow ball out for a test drive. Mm. Good thinking. Find your O at your local Toyota dealer with a $1,500 finance deposit bonus across the Hilux range. Toyota.
remember, stay focused. We're just here for a tow ball. A Toyota genuine tow ball? Dad, here it is. Designed and tested by Toyota. Oh. We might need to take this tow ball out for a test drive. Mm. Good thinking. Find your O at your local Toyota dealer with a $1,500 finance deposit bonus across the Hilux range. Toyota. Toyota Genuine Tow Ball? Dad, here it is. Designed and tested by Toyota. Oh. We might need to take this tow ball out for a test drive. Mm. Good thinking. Find your O at your local Toyota dealer with a $1,500 finance deposit bonus across the Hilux range. Toyota. Goal pressure on the Leopold defense. Burke tries to take it out. Oh, oh, stolen by Jared Carter, who runs into the goalpost. Nearly sends it flying into Church Street. But he's kicked the goal and he also put K Rock's own in there as well, I think. Hit by nine. Kellett gets it down. Side of the pack, Mole Rainey. Riccardi goes free. Handball over the top. Now the pigeon. Can he kick another one? The pigeon has kicked the goal! Tyler Pigeon! When it matters, he's kicked it. He's got the beak up and down. Do that. Insufficient intent paid. Keaton Rayner wants to spot up Garner. Has he got enough on it? Flying was Elliot McDonald. Here's Elliot McDonald on ground. Elliot McDonald snaps and goals. And they're back within 15. That's what I mean. Yeah. What's going to happen there? Spoke to him before, I think. Have we? K Rock oh, football, oh, I think right. we have. And uh, okay. um, yeah, so obviously they got the head to head with uh, the yes. Fraser Sport and Michael Rudd. Obviously, at the first quarter uh, was pretty neck and neck, but obviously Fraser stepped up that quarter. He had six kicks, two handballs that quarter, six score involvements, and the five goals. So he was absolutely the most dominant player on the ground. Michael Rudd went deep uh, in that game, in that quarter, because obviously Sam Burke went the other end, so he had to play that key forward role just didn't get the opportunity that Fraser Fort got so uh, at the moment Fraser Fort is absolutely tearing this game apart and the head-to-head's a little bit one-sided at this stage but uh, we're only a half down and Michael Rudd's got a chance to get himself back into this game and get his team back into this game we know he's a champion and he'll be absolutely fine Michael Rudd. Head-to-head thanks to White Cross Healthcare scooters walkers but much more trusted advice best solutions what what does Samaria's have to do in the third term Kirshen how far do they have to be in front with the uh, with this breeze? Well we saw that they kicked 3-5 with the breeze and and uh, had 24 inside forward 50s, which is nearly a, that's nearly a, that's a, that's a high margin. They, I think they average 63 inside 50s uh, a game. So what's that? They average about 15 and a half per quarter. So they're, they're plus nine on their average for the season. So uh, they've obviously had enough looks at it. Yes, the conditions uh, are conducive to repeat forward 50 entries and it's hard to rebound with the breeze, but they need to make sure that that 3-5 from the first quarter is 5-3 this quarter, at least 6-2 and get themselves a couple of goals in front. We saw yesterday that Lee 
Leopold can defend against the breeze and you can turn it into a scrimmage match where there's just repeat stoppage, repeat stoppage and I think that's exactly what we'll see in the last quarter if, if the scores are close. So Mary's have to pile on five, six goals this quarter and give themselves that three goal buffer and um, defend like they have never defended in their life in the last quarter. We saw it yesterday, they can do it, so I think we're in for a crack in second half of football. They only need uh, South Bowen to have like <laughs> one or two looks, just get a couple of goals going the other way, which would be out of character from the way the wind's going and the way the game's being played to really make it interesting for St Mary's as well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, St Mary's had 12 inside yeah. 50s then. They, they got two looks at it. They kicked two goals, you know. So um, you can get enough ball inside forward 50. You've just got to get it deep. They had a lot of uh, inside forward 50s that was at 30 to 40. You've got to get it into 0 to 30 to give yourselves a chance against the breeze. So maybe it's that one extra possession going in to get that deep uh, entry rather than a shallow entry. So South Barman, I think, as well, have to capitalise. And Give it to Fraser Fort. Get it around his area, Buzz. And, uh, you know, they're a chance to, to, to hit the scoreboard this quarter as well. But I think they've got to uh, they've got to defend well. They've got to be on their game. And they can't allow 24 inside forward 50s yeah. this quarter. They've got to keep that down to about 18, 17, I think, for them to, to be in a real show at three-quarter time. And, and what about matchup wise Kirsch, if you're in the St Mary's coaching box, are you just sticking a plus one no, no matter what in front of Fraser Fort, no matter what end they're kicking to? Or how, how are you going about that? That's a really interesting one. I, I feel that they probably will. <laughs> I feel that the, the sense is that, you know, you can't let Fraser Fort dictate terms the way you did then. I definitely think we'll see it in the third quarter. I'm not sure we'll see it against the breeze, but um, yeah, the first five minutes will certainly dictate that, but I think they're going to go for it themselves and, you know, play six ahead of the ball and give themselves every opportunity, I think, St Mary's to kick a score uh, going into three-quarter time. Then uh, they'll play with a plus one. I don't think we'll see it this quarter, but who knows? If Fraser Ford gets off the chain again, we're going to have to see it. They have to do it. So, at this stage, I'll say no, but I think the wingers will play a bit more of a defensive role coming in in front of Fraser Ford and not allowing him to be that uh, go-to every time, I reckon. Sam Burke back again, so he might still the job on Fraser Fort. Yeah, interesting Hamish Burke's back there with him as well. So Hamish Burke went forward in that second quarter and uh, Sam Burke obviously played that role on Fraser Fort. So yeah, interesting they haven't flicked him forward, Sam Burke. And Sprague is lining up at full forward. So complete, yeah. complete switch for him. A couple of changes there. So that's them trying to roll the dice a little bit too and you know, back Sam Burke into to, to having that one-on-one -on -one battle with Fraser Fort. Boys, an update on um, Mulroney. Two club officials have confirmed that he will not play for the rest of the season so he has really oh, yeah. um, oh, hurt that shoulder flush good. on the AC joint. Yeah, right. Thanks, uh, Birchie. So and that changes a bit in there too, Jace. Like a bit in there. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. Like we said. They have to find another one maybe in there to roll through, aren't they? Absolutely. They are. Yeah, we've got Boris now to a wing, which was he was very good in that second quarter. Just changes a few things. Bow and Timber, K-Rock, third quarter scoreboard. Here's Buzz. Underway. South Bowen by 16 points as we begin the second half and Callot is oh! caught and pinned for holding the ball. Wow. Straight away. That's stiff. He's the recipient. <laughs> wow. Off the step, goes inside 50. Driver read it best. Read it off the boot like a book. He takes the relieving mark. Does what Kirsch wants of him and handballs to Starkey on the run. He's at right half back. Just goes for distance. Geez, up early was Caldo. He has got some of the best hands in the business. Some off. I oh, reckon almost the best. How yeah, just sticky. I wonder how much grippo he uses or if they're just naturally just uh, sticky hands. But he's uh, always good at that part of the game. He went short to Callot, who kicks from the wing, goes towards Ford, who has three on him. That's going to be... Interesting point here, Kirsch. If they get a bit too fort focused, it was Ling. Absolutely. Who goes to Keast, who thought about playing on quickly, feigned the handball. Now goes inboard to McMahon, misses him, but Garner, it sits up. He arches the back. Handball's wider still. Rayner inside 50. Good looking kick, and Sherman marks on the chest. So St Mary's have a great opportunity to get back into this game in the second half and it's in good hands with Zach Sherman. He's pretty much directly in front, 35 out. Yeah, well, we, we're talking about Fraser Fort's second quarter, but remember, Zach Sherman's first quarter was was pretty impressive as well. He kicked a couple and was pretty instrumental with a couple of chains and transition through the middle of the ground. So he had himself a great first quarter as well. Has two to his name. Zach Sherman on the runway now. Kicks from 35. It's good. They get it back to 10 points the margin. Zach Sherman has three. And St Mary's strike first in the second half. It just, uh, I agree with you, Buzz, with that uh, 
focus on force. They all went to him then, all the defenders. They intercept marked on him because there was 3v1 on him. Uh, they might have just lowered their eyes a little bit. Brent Kellett just looked for Fort no matter what then. So they've got to be mindful of not being too Fort-centric. Have a look around you. Broughton, lower the eyes. There are some others there that can hit up. There's got to be somebody else out there if there's three on him. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> Caldo and Kellett were up the yeah, line. Up the ground, They're the ones yeah. who took the marks up the ground, so they didn't have that conduit down further. Back in the middle, Kellett got it down and got it back to himself now. Todd White inside 50. Caldo goes up. Johnny Broughton's there as well. Carmody, Burke next to him. So Rayner pushes him past the football, kick off the ground close to the boundary line. Okay. Gaden Rayner pushed the uh, comedy past it as well. The ball spills over the line. We'll have a boundary throwing 55 around from the South Bowen goal. Give me the sup and end in this third term. Thanks to Bowen Timber. Build better. And we'll have it throw in on the outer side for Callett up against Charlie Sprague. Having a run in the ruck now. So Callett gets it down. Trying to do some roving work as well. Ham through the middle for some Mary's coming the way. Boris got a round kick was smothered though. Fell into the arms of Cunningham for South Barn. Inside 50. Nick Connor's got a hand to it as well defensively and comes again. Chris Hughes does well. Kick around the corner. 30 from goal. Fought. Oh, nearly took the mark again. Ran away from him in the end. And Sam Burke will be having nightmares against Fraser Ford. Well, that ball just drifted away from him. Yeah, it's that's right. The breeze that drifted it on him. Boundary throw in right forward pocket South Barwon. Fort's going to do the ruck work against Sprague and probably try and take it out of the ruck contest. He chaps it on in the end. Now to Sam Burke. Gets a clearing kick. Back towards centre. Back Callick goes up. Takes the mark easy. Way too easy. And we'll drive it back in for the Swans. He will. He just pops it up to the hot spot. Here is Fort. Connor sat in the hole. Did well. Left cutting and open. White with the shake and bake back onto the left. Comes off the side of the boot. McMahon takes the relieving mark. As White tried to dance his way clear. Stabs one short to Ham, who's had heaps of it for St Mary's. He's at half back, and that's a, a kick that opens up the play to Blood, who just forced to kick quickly and coughs it up. Only as far as Wiedemann at centre half back for the Swans. Lucky Wiedemann plays on. Good on either side. Goes down the line. Good kick, too. And finds Cunningham, who goes inboard and finds Kelly. Kelly now gives away by hand to Chris Hughes. Handball further to Callett, running like a rover. Right foot kick open. Fort from behind. Worked his way there. Oh, Burke, did he take the mark? The umpire said he got a hand to it. Fort just threw him into the ground. We made sure he heard that, Sam Burke. It's going to be a ball up in the left forward pocket. <laughs> He heard, he heard his close. breath. He was that close. It was close to a mark, actually. It was. He did pretty well, didn't he? So Burke and Fort in the ruck on to Oh, Fraser takes it out and kicks the goal! Oh, no. Oh, the post. Oh. Wow-wee. Fraser. <laughs> Fraser Ford is just toying with everybody, including us. Five goals to his personal tally. 8-4-52 South Barwon. Samari 6-5-41 Barwon. Timber K-Rock. Third quarter scoreboard. And with the footy. 11-point margin, South Barwon's way. Early stages, third term. Hope you're enjoying the call on Live. It's a St Mary's free kick as McMahon takes the advantage from half-back. No, the umpire forces him to bring it back. It was... Play had, uh, had stopped and McMahon just swooped on it, so it'll come all the way back to right half-back. It's interesting, Rudd's gone into the ruck that we mentioned to get him into the game, and minchin has gone deep forward, so this is Rudd with the possession and uh, getting himself into the game. McDonald goes short to Ham, brought his own footy. He swings it a long way across ground. It works OK to Blood. He goes back onto his left side, good kick too, and finds Mashman on centre wing, who wheels and goes immediately onto his right foot. It's a chiselling ball, uh, clean pair of heels from Loftus, beat a couple, but then caught with the footy, holding the ball. Good pressure from Wiedemann, who started this second half well, earns himself the free kick. So Wiedemann at half back, one too many steps, one too much candy there from Kane Loftus. Wiedemann to centre, to centre wing. Burke goes up, punched away, pushing the back. Free kick going to South Barwon. Well, they got nervous again. So they did. One on one. Chawcraft in the front there got smacked. So now Callot, uh, Caldo goes long towards Fraser Fort and Callot. Burke's there as well. Sprague gets his hand to it. Play on. No, it's not. Play on. No, I think, I think Sprague got his first hand to it. 
and then Callet got it again. Umpire Douglas right on the spot. No, oh, no doubt. There, no doubt. And ball up centre wing. Sprague pushed past the footy now. Harry McMahon up the ground as well. Rides a bump from Hughes who steals the ball. Gets it in for, inside for Ford 50. Falls to Broughton. He got a hold. The umpire said play on. Now it's around the other way. It's a push from Ling. Ball still in dispute. Carmody about 30 out from goal in the back. Oh, great play. Ling got it away. Handball, Chalkraft. They're out now. Some Aries. McMahon on the gallop. Took a bounce and then drives it. It's a beautiful looking kick towards Copley who was up early. Dropped the mark. It falls fortuitously though. Loftus arches the back. Sherman squaring ball. Goff has been a rock in defence for the Swans in the long sleeves. Marks goes quickly across goal. It's a dangerous kick. It sits for Boris who gets uh, on his bike and kicks towards the wing. Blood used the body well. Falls to Sprague who just tumbles one. Goes for distance. The ball back inside 50. Shepard is first there for South Barwon. Handball's a long way across his own goal. They make them uh, at half of themselves here, the Swans. They eventually get out of trouble. Stark, his kick not great. No in the back called Connors. Lovely ball. And they will line it up again from about 35 out. No great angle. And it's Dion Johnston with the footy. He'll have a chance for St Mary's second of the third term. Delivery inside the Ford 50 Kirsch, not crash out, is it? No, it hasn't spun too many times correctly, the <laughs> ball, but uh, I guess when you get a few repeat entries on turnovers, a lot of players are out of position and you'll find a spare somewhere like they just did then. Dion Johnson yet to hit the scoreboard this afternoon. This will be just down to accuracy for him. And he comes, kicks from 40, looks to shape it back and hits the top of the post. Line of score. Margin back to 10. South Bowen's way. Eight and a half minutes gone. Third term on the Bowen Foods time clock. So kick in. Go short to Goff. Wants to give it back to Boris who runs past. Kick towards half back. Sam Burke, Sprague. Forts there as well. Long way from goal. Coming up. Maishman wrapped up. Umpire says play on. Ball spills free. Going to come in and ball it up. And the South Bowen faithful not happy there. In no, front of that contest, call. yeah, no, it was a good contest. And it's going to be a ball up at half forward for Samaris. Minchin gets it down. Harry Cunningham with the outside of the right foot dribbles along the ground towards the boundary line. McDonald back on the ground. He sees it over, and everybody takes a breath on centre wing. We've played nine and a half minutes in this third term. Barn Foods time clock. It's South Barn 8 4 52. They lead Samari 6 6 42. 10 point margin, tossed in. Good battle in the ruck between Minchin and Callot this afternoon. Garner on the burst to Damien McMahon, who kicks oh. to half forward. And Garner's been pinged for a throw. Kirsch is onto it. That's why he's in the experts' chair, thanks to the Sporting Globe. Well, they're very lucky there because they had an out number or an off balance at the stoppage. And uh, I think it was Hughes who might have overrun the ball. And they had the plus three at the back of the stoppage, which was very fortunate. It was a throw for South Barwon. They were away. So, Wiedemann in the centre square. Takes the free kick, goes towards Forts, who's up early on the stretch. There is no chance anyone can get a fist to that when he puts his arms in the air. Well, no. Give it to the runner. He says, I'll do this. He's a long way from home, 70 or so out. He'll just look to drive it. Dumps as he kicks inside 50. Geez, Caldo was up early and took out Hughes, too, in the marking contest. We'll have a ball up. About 35 out, 45 degree angle for the Swans. Grumpy Cat went to ground just to see if he could get it down the ground. He played well yeah, fitted, didn't he? Burke got him that much. Yeah. Nah. Tossed up. Fought back in the ruck. Takes it out of there. Stripped to the footy. Chalkcraft falls in the lap of Jared Garner just outside his defensive half. Garner now. Oh, thought about long and then goes across. Centre half back. Have to be good. Mawson was there. Falls towards Rainer, Rainer who gives it away to Damien McMahon. He goes out wide. And Copley, driver, they see it close to the boundary line. Jack sees it over, runs up the bike path, and then it'll come back for a throw in about 35 around from the Samaris goal. And they only kick one in this third term. They still trail by 10 points. Throw in in their Ford 50, Minchin and Callet. And Ford Minchin gets it down, Chalkcraft tracks it, can't pick it up. First attempt, second attempt, he's ridden into the ground by Madigan. It falls back towards Madigan again. He's pushed past the football by Copley. 
And it rolls out of bounds again for a throw in 40 around from the St Mary's goal. 10 points of difference. We've played 12 minutes in this third term. Bowen Foods time clock. Bowen Foods sells the freshest fish direct to you. Donga Road in North Geelong. As Jace mentions, the 12 minutes gone, but only the one goal to Zach Sherman in this third term to either side. As the ball is tossed in, plenty of numbers around it. Good luck getting it out of there. I think we'll have another stoppage, and we do. The ball is camped inside the St Mary's forward 50, about 35 out from goal. Tossed up quickly. Minchin won it down with a little backhander in the ruck for the Saints, but again, numbers win the day. Have a ball up. South Barn will be happy with this buzz. Just repeat stoppages. We saw it yesterday. Repeat stoppage after repeat stoppage. It slows the game down. Callet won it down dominantly, but to no great advantage. As the ball goes out of play, Copley tried to burst through the stoppage, but couldn't, and it'll be tossed in just inside the paint of 50. We'll give it over to Jace Doherty, see if he can get it out of trouble. All right. The boundary throw in. Minchin and Callet. And Callet in front, really small, shallow boundary throw in. Ball to the side of the pack. Oh, Copley got one from Todd White. Oh, he's going to be sore in back play as well. Ball off the hands of Caldu and Hamish Burke on the outer side centre wing. And we will have another boundary throw in. So this is good for South Bowen, Kirsch. Absolutely it is. So you get to the 15, 16, 17 minute mark of this quarter and all of a sudden you're only a couple of minutes off red time and, you know, that's when you really start to defend more and they've only held them for the one goal at the moment. Now from uh, Minchin's tap down, got it to Keastig then. Chal Craft outside of the right boot and the inside out torpedo punt. And Charlie Sprague took a great contested mark, 30 out directly in front. And a set shot for goal for St Mary's to make the margin four points. As soon as we set it, they got yeah. clearance. And yeah. uh, a goal from a stoppage is a, a bit of a killer, particularly when you've defended so well. But, you know, you just got to get the ball inside forward 50 sometimes to a quick one-on-one. -on -one and Sprague was smart enough to be in front and lead his opponent. So Charlie Sprague, who's been moved forward, as we said, had a short run in the ruck as well in this third term. Chance for Samiri's seventh of the afternoon. 30 at northern end, directly in front. The TV evangelist stands the mark. He comes in and goal umpire has to work a little bit, but he's put it through. So they go to 7-6-48. And they trail South Barwon. Uh, after, as we said, Fraser Ford's kick five, and uh, they were uh, well, they needed that. St. Mary's on the bow and Timber K Rock third quarter scoreboard. They are seven six forty eight. South Bowen are eight four fifty two, and Bowen Timber build better. Kirsch, absolutely. You still feel South Bowen have got to, you know, they've got to keep pressing here. They've got to score this quarter. They just can't really hold on to a lead, and then hope the Breeds will do it for you in the last. You still got to score, and that's what they need to do at the moment. And remember, they are a man down too with Taylor Mulraney's shoulder injury as Chalkraft out of a stoppage from 55. High ball to the pocket. Oh. Goff! With the climb, a Hamlin hanger contender from Rowan Goff, who has been superb in the back half of the Swans. The long sleeves, the long arms. Takes a great mark. Rowan Goff goes towards Wiedemann and four to... It was about fourth in line, but still nearly marked it. We'll have a ball up just inside 50 for St Mary's. Is he on the VFL list at Geelong, Kirsch, still, Rowan Goff? I don't think he is, no. Gee, he is, I'll tell you what. It was last year. Yeah. Didn't uh, crack it for a game as Callet rips it out of the stoppage. Back into the middle of the ground. Caldo has two to beat, stuck the knee up. All fair. Play on the call. Broughton tries to spin out of trouble. He was caught. Ball comes to ground level. Here is Fort in the middle of West Oval. Just tumbles one forward and it's a foot race. Here comes Boris. He has three to beat. Ling's first there. He's caught. And that's had to be holding the footy. Ethan Boris Kirsch is playing some sort of game for South Bowl. Absolutely. You know, we spoke about it yesterday with some of the St. Joey's young guns. And, you know, this is a kid who's on the VFL list. He's obviously played a lot of Falcons games. And he's one young kid that's really stepped up this year to this level. And uh, he's showing it on the big stage right now. So Ling got to the footy first in that foot race to an open 50 and Boris stripped him of the footy pretty much so here is the goal that Kirsch speaks of that South Barn would dearly love he'll kick from 40 pretty much directly in front Ethan Boris it's a shank 
I don't think he's even scored. The old man would have kicked it much better than that, I reckon. <laughs> it's gone out on the full. <laughs> he ran very close to the man on the yeah, mark. Actually, it would be tossed in. I think the umpires are saying it's touched. just bounced or touched. So it'll be tossed in a couple of metres around from the Swans goal. You can hear the South Bar, uh, the St Mary's bench yelling, don't let Fraser Fort take it out of the ruck as O'Neill's ripped to the ground and will do it all again. Well, the advantage is about not taking out the ruck. You've got Minchin there, so he's not up against the, the defender per se. Minchin tried to get it down too. Ball back towards Fort. Kelly O'Neill off a oh, step. No way. Harry oh, Cunningham has kicked the goal! Harry Cunningham turns around and kicks the goal that we were talking about against the Breeze. His first of the afternoon out of nothing in the contest. Oh. And they go to 9 4 58 now, South Barwon. And they lead Samiri 7 6 48. Barwon Timber K Rock. Third quarter scoreboard in the experts' chair. Thanks to the Sporting Globe. Beat, drink, sport. Rory Street, Geelong. Here's Kirsch. Make no mistake about the degree of difficulty of that kick for goal there. Around the corner, in traffic, in a stoppage, against the breeze. You saw Ethan Boris's ball hold up and how hard it was to kick 40 into it. That ball went sky high, straight through the middle. That was a cracking goal by Cunningham. Couple of great snaps from Carmody. And now Cunningham for the Swans to that end of the grounds. They're back underway. Noble tackled quickly by Keaton Rayner. Back to a 10-point margin. 9-4 plays 7-6. Nearly 18 minutes gone on the Barn Foods time clock. Third term as Loftus is caught and pinged. Holding the ball. Big Ben Kellett is lifting in this second half. Earns himself the free kick and he'll dump it. Inside 50 in the Caldo direction. Up early, couldn't quite mark. Comes to ground level. Here is Noble. Handballs to White, who had Travellini on his hammer immediately. And we'll have a ball up just outside 50 for South Barwon. Was a great handball. Stationary one-on-one. -on -one. So mentioned from the ruck contest, down to Garner, who just gets collected by two straight away. And falls to the ground with the footy. Going to give it back to the umpire. Ball up. At right half forward for South Barwon. Callet and Minchin. Callet hold somewhere along the line. They've been holding each other all day. And for it, play on advantage. Keast through the middle. Gets the advantage and goes along with the kick towards half forward. Oh, the TV evangelist falls over at the crucial stage. Driver comes across to help him. Jack does well. Handballs it to nobody in particular, though. Comes back to him nearly. He's on hands and knees. Pack develops. Good, good outcome for South Barwon. They hold it up. And we'll have a ball up about 40 out from Samaria's goal. And Kellett's been absolutely huge today, but I reckon he's given away about seven or eight free kicks. Just gives him that clearance from a stoppage. They took it out of the contest to Garner outside of the right boot. Great tackle, Cunningham doing it both ends of the ground. Kicks the goal, then takes the resultant free kick at half back for South Barwon. Clearly his wrist is OK. He yes. has been sensational <laughs> since he's come back on. Magic tape on the wrist. He plays on quickly. Good looking kick to Stark. He had to sit and wait. Hand gave away the free kick in any case. Kelly takes the advantage, goes down the line towards Carmody. But Loftus is there, he gets a fist in and out of play, neutral territory, centre wing broadcast side. Ten point margin, South Barwon's way, nearly 20 minutes gone in this third term on the K Rock Barwon Timber third quarter scoreboard. Be brought in this engrossing battle in the ruck between Minchin and Callet. They go again, Minchin wins it down convincingly to Keast on the turn, but straight in the lap of Jack Driver at halfback for the Swans. He handballs to Shepard, who chisels one and turns it over. Copley takes the mark, plays on, back inside, 50 driver at the front of the pack, and at the back, is that Rudd? Yes. I think he's taken the mark in a big pack of players. That's a fair old climb. And Michael Rudd, who we haven't seen a lot of today, will have a chance to narrow the margin to four points. He's about 30 metres out at a slight angle. Kershaw will be happy to put a stat down, I think, there. Yes, just going to get him in the game. Uh, we said that. That's why he went into the, the ruck at about the five-and-a-half-minute mark of his quarter to have a little bit of a run around. He'll kick from left half forward. He's a left footer, of course. Michael Rudd enjoying a fantastic season. It's a beautiful kick of the ball, Buzz. Oh, Self a VFL debut for Carlton this year and slots it. That's a big one for the Saints. And it's back to four points. As we're into red time, third term on the Carrock Bow and Timber, third quarter scoreboard.
Yes, and that, again, that was probably that one that's a bit more direct, quick to a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, they haven't really had a good look at it. Whilst they get enough inside 50 ball, they just haven't had some quality go in there. So uh, it gives him an opportunity. He's taken the mark, taken a goal, uh, get him into the game. So back to four points of difference. 21 and a half played in this third term. They probably need a couple of quick ones, don't they, St Mary's Kirsch? Oh, we're into red time with yeah. 22 and a, well, 21 and a half minutes gone. We'd expect it to maybe go 30 at most. So they've only had the 11 inside forward 50s, which is, you know, we said to keep it 16 to 18 with the breeze. They've done a really good job, South Palmer. So they're on track for that. This is going to maybe reduce that scoring ability in the next five to seven minutes. Back in the middle, Minchin and Callet. Oh, Callet line fella. turn, the big fella. Goes long with the kick towards Mawson, pushed off the footy link took the mark he's had a good game harry link and plays on goes to the outer side with the kick holds up a little bit punched away defensively but sherman is there he got gets the hand up have ball over the top to blood his handball further afield chawcraft on center wing measures the pass to half forward over the head of copley coming out with sprague they are asking for a full on the full and it is it's off the leg of goff and charlie sprague has the free kick and he's about 30 metres out on the boundary line in what we would term at St Mary's the Paul Peck pocket. <laughs> but uh, he goes, comes back in board to Sherman. So hasn't gained any distance, but it's obviously going to be a better angle now because Zach Sherman is back inside the field of play. He was actually on the bike path when he took the uh, free kick, Charlie Sprague. So Zach Sherman's kicked three this afternoon. He'd be a bit disappointed with that kneel because they didn't really man up then. He was a spare, didn't think they were going to use him. And it's Zach Sherman. Of course they're going to use him. They are, and he's 45 out. Comes in with the breeze. Hasn't quite got the distance. Off hands. And through for one behind. So they go to 8, 7, 55 now. Samaris. It's our Bowen 9, 4, 58. Bowen Timber K-Rock. Third quarter scoreboard. Birch, you might get down to you in a second to see Kane Loftus getting some work done on the St Mary's bench on a leg issue of some sort. We'll get down to you in a second when there's a break in play. Cunningham, was he caught high as he's ripped over the boundary? No, said the umpire. Just checking him there was... Yeah, he's just a bit slow to get up. He's, he's near track. that bike track, but looks to be OK. Had that wrist issue early doors, but he's back on the ground and playing a pretty good game for his side. I think Zach Sherman just checking on him. It's tossed in. 55 out from the St Mary's goal at right half forward. There's another whistle in the ruck. It's another ruck infringement. You hold on to that, Kirsch. Sid Callett's been holding Minchin all day, who goes inside 50, just pops it up. Wiedemann at the front, comes to the back. There's a fall fortuitously for St Mary's. No rush through by Goff. Through for a minor score. Now a two point margin. South Barwon's way. There's 24 minutes tick by on the Barwon. Bowen Foods time clock in the third term. Starkey, short little kick into Madigan. Takes the mark. Matt Keith stands at the mark. So the next five minutes, this is all they've got to do. They've just got to maintain a bit of possession. They can't go down the line too much because it's just going to rebound 50. Goes towards Fort. Oh, takes the two grabber. One or just two. kick it to Fort. Fraser's taken it at a half back. Just takes his time. This takes the mark, like he's going to kick for goal. Well, Callot's got to get across. They've all got to yeah. come across here. Caldo's got to come over. If you're going down the line, you need your bigs. Goes to Caldo now. There he is. So there you go. Well coached, Matt. Good work. Caldo's taken the mark at centre wing. He's just going to hold it up. Oh, well, he hasn't got, got Fraser to kick to, Jase. But Todd White <laughs> to kick to. That only goes in that direction. But Chop, Con Chip Connors comes across. Now Damien Miman, handball over the top to Hamish Burke. Going to be under pressure from Madigan. Drop the footy. Oh, that's high. Rayner should get a free kick and will. Right in front of the St Mary's coaching box, which they're very happy about. Rayner's going to take the free kick. And Dropped straight away, though, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he made sure he knew it was coming. Yep. He goes with a kick. It's terrible off the boot garner, though. Oh, ripped off him by Kelly O'Neill, who then wobbles the ball towards Todd White. He can't take the mark. Now Sam Burke just kicks it around the corner towards half forward. Over the back, Travellini can't take it. Stark is there as well. And Rudd sees it over the boundary line near centre wing. Birchie, down to you, Kane Loftus. Yeah, he's just had that left um, thigh heavily strapped, so it be interesting to see whether it's hamstring related or uh, more of a corky. All right, we'll keep an update uh, with that. St John and Guide, we put you first injury update. Boundary throwing on centre wing. Tossed in down to Cunningham, who's caught immediately and wrapped up, brought to ground. Another ball up, broadcast side. Centre wing, beautiful sunshine here at West Oval. Nice change up from uh, the first couple of weeks, that's for sure. Ball comes out white. 
usually clean. This is no different. Shepard just gets it on the boot quickly towards Caldo. Burke does a good job from behind the matchstick. Garner just tumbles one to centre half forward. Weaving his way through. Chalkraft from 50. Doesn't go for home. Just squares it up and finds the chest of Sprague, I think it is, in the goal square. Right, actually. That's right, sorry. And there's a... Players are looking back. I think the mark is being paid. And it is. And Michael Rudd on the dive. Although, there's the umpires are looking back here. No, nothing's happening. Thought there might have been something back in play. But it's Rudd, the recipient. A good mark down low. Has a chance to put St Mary's back in front, Kirsch. Absolutely, yes. He's uh, getting the area. He, I mean, we, we spoke about how good a footballer is. And... Uh, and a lovely he's straight in front and he's missed it. That is the all-time Moz from Ever. Matt Kershaw. Ever. That is uh that was directly in front, 20 metres out, and has pushed it to the far side. Minor score back to one point, South Barwin's way. Starkey plays on from fullback for South Barwin. Goes to Boris. Who takes the mark inside defensive 50. Harry McMahon stands the mark. So now Boris plays on. Short little kick. And Damien McMahon takes the mark. So good slips catch. That right half forward. Another chance for St Mary's. He's 70 from goal. He's going to load up. Brother Harry gives him the lead. He goes in that direction. Fraser comes from behind, punches it down. Starkey with a kick. It was smothered, though, by Sherman. Falls to the side of the pack. No, shot. Shepherd can't pick it up. Harry McMahon just toe-poked it towards the boundary line. And the umpire says... It will be a ball up. Madigan came across with the tackle. Travellini gets up, handballs it back to umpire Douglas, who will ball it up inside forward 50 for St Mary's. Rudd gets it down with the left. Or oh, don't argue from Johnson. Got the kick away. Driver. And it's out of bounds for a throw in. Right forward pocket. St Mary's into attack. They trail by a point. 8 9 57. South Bar with 9 4 58. Obviously, with the breeze, they've had the advantage of the, the more ball inside forward 50. It's five zip for marks inside forward 50, St Mary's way. Tossed in a couple of metres around from the St Mary's goal in the right forward pocket. Callet with front spot for South Bowen. The ball out of play again as 28 and a half minutes tick by on the Bowen Foods time clock. Third term, one point margin the way of South Bowen. You've kicked one goal in this third term to three for St Mary's. Tossed in again. Callet just thumps it with his left hand. Only as far as Maceman on the turn. Boy, that's a good finish on the left foot. And just on the cusp of three-quarter time, Joe Maceman does what Joe Maceman does. He hits the scoreboard. You know that better than most, Kirsch. And St Mary's are back in front. Five point the lead. Well, I was just watching him off that stoppage and I actually thought he might have got on the move, but he was smart and just held his ground, held a bit of width for that, maybe that quarterback handball, but it was the loose ball that came out from Kellett and he just swooped on it. And Joe Maishman, he's a, well, we know how talented he is. He's an absolute jet. I love him, but left and right, he's so skillful and uh, he can finish and does love to celebrate a goal. And his hair is beautiful. <laughs> OK, fair enough. Back to the middle. Rudd got it down. Doing fashion tips too, Absolutely. Kurt. We're in trouble. Chalkraft long to centre half forward. Punched away by driver. Front and centre was good. Ham, handball over the top. Oh, Burke's handball was terrible. Keith had to go back and help him out. He did. He got around Fraser. Left foot kick high towards the square. It's all driver. Goes up. Huggins punched away at the back of the pack. Under pressure. Travellini. Siren couldn't get a kick away there. And it's three-quarter time here at West Oval. And it's Samaris, 9-9-63. They lead South Barwon, 9-4-58 in that quarter. Samaris were able to kick a four goals, four, and one goal, th one, goal one to South Barwon. It's five points of difference at three-quarter time here at West Oval in the first semi-final. We're going to take a break and then come back for the all-important final term of the first semi-final between Samaris and South Barwon. And uh, we're here for Apco Cafe 24-7. As always, hot chips, only four. Bucks, live, breathe, K-Rock football. I'm running the laps you get when you're late for training. I'm doing this lap so you can get to training safely. Because late is always better than never. Being late isn't the end of the world. 
causing a road crash by going even a little bit over the limit? Could be. This lap so, so you can all get put in back safe. This lap? This lap. This lap. This lap is so you can show up to your team and slow down on the road. <laughs> There is literally no reason you just speed. So this lap, so you don't have to rush. Hang on. Why am I running laps? I'm retired. Toyota Genuine Tow Ball? Dad, here it is. Designed and tested by Toyota. Oh. We might need to take this tow ball out for a test drive. Mm. Good thinking. Find your O at your local Toyota dealer with a $1,500 finance deposit bonus across the Hilux range. Toyota. Stay focused. We're just here for a tow ball. A Toyota Genuine tow ball? Dad, here it is. Designed and tested by Toyota. Oh. We might need to take this tow ball out for a test drive. Mm. Good thinking. Find your O at your local Toyota dealer with a $1,500 finance deposit bonus across the Hilux range. Toyota. Already there after their victory yesterday against St. Joey's by 24 points. And uh, earlier today, South Barwon won the reserves uh, by 29 points against Leopold. Leopold out. And uh, St. Joey's will play... Uh, sorry, uh, South Barwon will play... Uh, St. Joey's next week in the preliminary final. St. Mary's already there after their big 83-point win. Yeah, no, Kirsch is going to walk back in. He's just having a great little chat to a few people out the back. I've just been waxing lyrical here by myself. It was a bit of South Bowen people going, what do they do this quarter? They just kick at the fort. I'm like, there's a bit of a trap with that. Everyone's <laughs> getting excited out there, Jace, about the fortress. But uh... <laughs> Oh, the fortress. So we like still that. Play, still like got to play football. We do. And uh, what do they have to do in the last quarter? Samaris and South Barn, for that matter. Do they, they're going to be a bit careful that because uh, they're all going to collapse on Fraser. So what's going to happen there? It's deja vu, Jace, from yesterday, isn't it? It really is. And uh, I know we've spoke about it throughout the day, but uh, the Leopold method of where they went about it yesterday and how they defended in that last quarter against the Breeds was superb. So I think we'll see a lot of that. We're definitely going to get a plus one throughout the whole quarter. That will be obvious. I reckon a, a, a winger might slide back and just play that extra one or that's where they'll get their plus one from. Um, so, yeah, that's 
that'll be interesting as to what Mark Neal does. How does he combat that? Does he play with a plus one up the other end or does he go and equalise? Personally, I would like to go and see them equalise. I'd like to have seen that yesterday at times to go the equalisation and play 7v7. But, um, yeah, they've got to obviously lower their eyes going into their forward 50 South Barwon because the obvious thing is Fraser Fort. So, John T. Broughton, we saw at times in that second quarter, spare. Lower your eyes. Caldo's going to be there somewhere as well. Then the Smalls come into it. Noble's been quiet today. He needs to probably hit the scoreboard a little bit calm, but he's been dangerous. So they've got some options up there. They don't have to go to Fraser Fort. He's set them up. They can finish it off with some other avenues into goal. St Mary's, they're just going to win the ball at centre. Centre clearances or any stoppage around the ground and get inside their forward 50. They've had looks at it against the Breeze. They had 12 against the Breeze in that second quarter, St Mary's. So they're going to get at least 10 to 12 looks at it. All right, the experts share for the Sporting Globe. As always, eat, drink, sport, Rory Street, Geelong. Matt Kershaw, Mark Neald will be near Birchie somewhere. And, oh, this is going to be fun, this three-quarter time, little uh, Neald interaction. Birchie, you down there? Yes, yes. I am. Yes. Just where, to where is the great the... man? Is he, runs up, he runs upstairs, doesn't he? He doesn't, uh, doesn't spend time down here, does he? Just... I lost him. He's run away, probably. Up there, but... Um, and... No, just I'm breaking up a little yeah, bit. A little bit um, yeah. I think he's uh, I think he shot upstairs, but what I can tell you, yep. there was no mincing of the words in there. There was no whispering. <laughs> there was no gathering the troops in. It was circled up and he was eyeballing players and asking them what they were going to give him in this final 20 minutes. He was absolutely fired up and uh, I think he just thought, well, you know, the messages are, are pretty clear. They know what they need to do and he just gave them an ultra rev. Nice. Thanks, Birchie. Three quarter time. Uh, address from Mark Neal there. And uh, Bertie, thanks to AB Australia Quality Shelving. Quality Shelving and Storage for your home, office, or workplace. Final term, just waiting for a big crowd here today, too. As we said, both um, both huddles had lots of people around it. What are we looking at? Kershaw, Wombat Gully. Harry McMahon's gone back behind the ball. So he's not the plus one at the moment, but they'll generate a plus one, I have no doubt. And Harry McMahon's gone defensive. He hasn't what really he been in it. Goals this year, but haven't, hasn't hit the scoreboard today. Yeah, he hasn't been close to it today at the moment. So another change by Samaris. It's five points of difference at three-quarter time at Samaris by that margin. Here's the final term and here's Buzz. Set up beautifully. Placing the prelim awaits the winner of this one. And it is going down to the wire. And it's a free kick from the get-go going south bars. Right. That's nearly 50. It was pegged back at the door, Madigan. Nothing doing. Kicks from the centre circles deep inside. 50 in the fourth direction. Lost his footing at the inopportune time. The ball trickles away from Noble. And Connors ushers the ball over the boundary line. We'll toss it in. 10 or so metres around from the south bar and goal. And kicking with the aid of the breeze in the final term. I reckon it's worth at least a couple of goals, that breeze. Fort was just uh, got rid of in the ruck, really. And there's a free kick going South Barnes way for high after that ruck contest. And they'll have the chance to kick the first. Eric Cunningham. And I think it is Cunningham. It is Jay spot on. He'll have a chance to kick his second of the afternoon. Tight angle, right forward pocket. Kirsch, what does he have to do here? Well, the breeze is going to bring it back to him. So maybe a little bit of left goal post, I'd suggest, and bring it, drift it back in. But uh, tough kick, really, isn't it? It's coming across your left shoulder. Although he just did kick the goal of the day before. So uh, anything's possible. It's the voice of Matt Ker Kershaw in the experts chair. Thanks to the Sporting Globe. Knows his way around uh, the goal face. In comes Harry Cunningham. Tight angle. Can he work it back with the breeze? It's across the face. He won't score. It falls to four. So the ball's still in play. He's brought to ground by a couple. And then we'll have another ball up on the opposite side of the ground. It's the broadcast side. A couple of metres around from the Swans goal. Funny thing is, it actually slipped through his hands. He actually got his hands to it, Fraser Fort. Oh, he handed the ball back to umpire Wilson. He was smiling. What's going on there, Fraser? Ball off hands in the ruck contest. Out of bounds. Boundary throwing in the left forward pocket. He's been working in tandem with the umpires today. <laughs> Less grumpy, Fraser, at the moment. So, boundary throwing. Absolutely. South Barn into attack. Throw in, short. Fort takes it out and he tries to take it out of the ruck. Broughton's there as well. Is that too high? It is. St Mary's will take the free kick. Broughton's tackle on Harry McMahon. As we said, playing behind the ball in this 
final term. He chips the ball short to Matt Keith. That is get a ruler out. That's just the required distance. He goes short again. And Sherman takes the mark, plays on now, goes into the back pocket opposite side, Harry McMahon, to try and give him some run, does so. Short little kick to brother Damien, who takes it at def defensive 50. Called to play on now, off a step. There is high kick to centre wing. Hamish Burke to go up by himself and take the mark. Some areas. Oh, hang on, it must have been touched off the boot, was it? And it was, said the umpire. So it's going to be a ball up on centre wing on the outer side. A bit of confusion around the ground. Mm. Three minutes gone, final term. Tossed up. Geez, Maishman kicked that fantastic goal just for three quarter time. Geez, was Copley taken without it? He was. <laughs> Get one back, I think. So there he's. Uh, Copley with the free kick out of side centre wing. Bit of theatre there, Kirsch. Absolutely, there was. <laughs> In front of the St. Mary's faithful, or some of. He just goes for distance, hyping under ball. Minchin has the sit. His rud came late. Got a nice piece of it too. Ball comes to the ground level. We're about 65 out or so from St Mary's goal. We'll have another ball up. Left half forward for them. Tossed up quickly. Callot wins it down for South Barwon. Rayner was there. Hunting for it as Connors goes by hand. And was the ball out of play? I think it might have been there's a whistle there's confusion again on that outer side was it out of play was it a free kick what's happening someone take control of it free kick i think, I think it is a free kick yeah, and it's going matt back copley. to matt copley back where we started on center wing yep he's got it go short towards rayner called to play on back to copley he goes with a left foot this time, high towards half forward. Needs a mark. McDonald, big punch away by the evangelist. Huggins gets it down, Cunningham. Oh, he got to get one high. The umpire says yes. And oh, a bit of free kick action to Man Fitty as well. So Zach Sherman gives it away. Not happy. He got Harry Cunningham high and then gave away 50. So that's silly. And that will bring Harry Cunningham down 60 from goal. So, so now Harry Cunningham has got the ball. He's just pointed towards the goals. This will be a fair kick. Hey, please, I kick this 70. Oh, no. 30. Kirsch, take it easy if he gets close to goal here. No, he does. And he goes towards Caldo. And he takes the mark on the lead, the skipper. And good play, Harry Cunningham. And good play by Matt Caldo as well. And he has kicked one this afternoon. This to give South Bar on the lead. You must love service like that, that oh, forward, Kirsch. You, you, we haven't seen that much today, have we? That lead, marking lead. And, Joe, what the good thing was that everyone was focused on Cunningham going to force, and there was absolute paddock in front of Caldo. Comes in now, 30 out, right of centre, and he has kicked that goal! Caldo kicks his second, and South Bowen get the lead, 10-4, 64. They lead Samaris 9 9 63. Harvey Norman Electrical K Rock final quarter scoreboard. Harvey Norman Electrical warm ponds and cryos. Same day delivery, seven days a week. And Neil, you'd be very happy with that because lower your eyes. Everyone's going to go to Fort. We're going to be Fort focused, but no, there's going to be space for you to lead into. And that's exactly what they did. And Cunningham, smart enough not to blaze away. He was 70 out, kicking at 65, and there was the space for Caldo to run into. It was an absolute dart, too. Real bullet inside 50. Back in the middle, Middleton and Garner go to work. Have a ball up. One point lead to South Barwon. Minchin palms it down. And looking for Garner. That was a free kick against Middleton. So Garner will take the free kick. And he plays on from the centre square. Just high up and under ball. Sprague at the back came with the fly. Comes to ground. Hughes puts his fist through at Garner. He was just in the middle of the ground and nearly ended up with it. Madigan was taken in a strong Maishman tackle on the paint. And we'll have a, a ball up at right half forward for St Mary's who trail South Bowen by one. Nearly seven minutes gone. Final turn. So Minchin gets it down with the left fist. Maishman runs through the pack. Gets the right foot kick into the pocket. Oh, Goff. Who else? <laughs> Freak. Reads the play so well. Rowan Goff takes the mark in the back pocket. 
Have you taken his intercept marks today, Kirsch? I haven't, but... Uh, you wouldn't be able to count them if so many. Goes towards Callot, punched away Minchin. Front of the best seats in the house, thanks to Apco Cafe 24-7. Hot chips, only four bucks. They're averaging about six a quarter at the moment to set marks, and I'd suggest he'd have probably half of those throughout the day. So a throw in, 55 around from the Samaris goal. You sense they need a goal now. Goes up, Callot gets it down, Minchin gets a second tap, Cunningham kick around the corner, Maishman doesn't sit for him, he just taps it back towards the ruck contest, Callot, only as far as Travellini up the chimney to Garner. Ah, he got to get one high anyway. It probably wasn't going to be a mark for less than 15, but he plays on quickly. Garner puts it at the top of the square. Away from Goff. Which way is it going to sit? Dion Johnston has it. He's wrapped up straight away. Middleton, Cunningham, bear hug him to the ground, and we'll have a ball up. 35 out directly in front from the Samaris goal. Bird repeat inside forward 50 for Samaris. So they're getting a good look at it. Zach Sherman back on the ground and lurking for St Mary's. Garner on the turn. Just under a bit of heat. Some good heat. Some needed heat from Lockie Middleton. Kirsch, who just got a hand in at the, uh, the important time. Just getting on top around the clearances at the moment. They're really on the fly at the moment, St Mary's. If you watch them at their stoppages, they're getting on the move. Mason Garner, they're just getting on the run. They're 4-1 up in clearances. So, so South Barwon need to just tidy up a bit in that area. Huggins goes a long way across goal to fall short of Cunningham too and the bounce doesn't favour him either. Rainer overran it and it'll be a ball in. St Mary's will be happy with that. The ball's at left half forward for them just inside the forward 50. They trail by one, eight and a half gone on the Bowen Foods time clock. Final term, second semi, one down and again we'll have another stoppage inside the St Mary's 50. I dare say an extra time is on the table. Oh, stop no. it. <laughs> stop it. Ball up. Some Harry's into attack from the ruck contest. Big pack there. Ball still in dispute with the umpire. We'll come in and ball it up again. So Minchin and Callot. Ruck work. Minchin gets it down on the fly again. Chalcraft through the middle. Ball spills free from the contest. Boris. Gets a clearing kick. Back towards the middle. No mark. Ling fought. Pushes past it. Tries to get away. Gets the left foot kick as well. Now it's back towards centre half forward. Mawson taps it on intelligently. Chris Hughes. Will it sit for him? He has to do it. Turn around. Oh, 180. Gets it back towards Broughton. He's wrapped up. Drops the footy back to Kelly. Kelly off a step. Open goal square. And it bounces through for a goal. Paddy Kelly has kicked the goal. His first of the afternoon and the 11th for South Barwon. And they lead by seven points now. 11 4 70. They lead St Mary's 9 9 63. Harvey Norman Electrical K Rock final quarter scoreboard. Fair say it, the grumpy cat just kept his feet, got the ball on, moved. He, he knew exactly where the numbers were ahead of the ball. He had, had a plus one ahead of the ball. They just had to get the ball to the favour, and they did. And then some smart play. Even Jonty Broughton, just not to panic, just to keep his feet, feed the ball back, get the ball inside forward 50. Away they went. Back in the middle. May have seen some fantastic snaps today. Oh, going through for goals. Kelly adding another one to the collection there. The ball's a centre half forward for South Bar and his blood caught one high, I think it was. So he tracked the ball back and himself a free kick. Not sure how fit Jack Blood is, Kirsch. Extremely quiet today. Seeing him kick on his left. We wouldn't regard him as a uh, two-sided player. He kicks to the wing. Minchin has the sit and marks. On the stretch, blood back in for his first game since a round 13 adductor injury, of course. Minchin has no backswing in his kicking, just uh, <laughs> loves just kicking off a step. There's no run up, there's nothing about it. Just swings his leg through. Oh, no. And that's oh, holding the that. footy. And I tell you what, Glenn Keys just throwing the hat's curse. Uh, the hat's I gone. I don't blame him. In frustration as Middleton earns himself the free kick. Middleton from centre wing. <laughs> oh, goes towards Fort and Burke. Goes to the front of the pack. Mashman to tap it on, back towards Callot, tries to roll, oh, a bit of candy from Ben Callot, left foot kick towards Broughton, off the back side of the pack, Todd White, left foot kick, across the face of goal, Damien Iman on the last line of defence for Samaris, comes broadcast side, it's Rudd against Shepard and Rudd plucks the mark at half back, wants to move it on, he hasn't got much to kick to though, they're all behind the ball Samaris, so they have to all work their way forward, he goes short to Garner who takes it in front of O'Neill, and Kelly O'Neill has to come back, Garner. Sort of playing for half a 50, which is 25. He doesn't well, get Kellett's, it, though. Ben Kellett's found himself ahead of the ball, so he needs to get back here on Minchin. 
Yeah, well, he's going that way now. Minch and Jack Driver. Oh, gee whiz. Jack takes the mark. And he'll be doing some appearances during the week. His play manager will get that sorted out for him. He's had a big game. He came down very, very awkwardly then. Well, he can't kick anyway, so just handball On Jack. his left, oh, so that's a plus. His ankle a bit. Yeah, his ankle. Just handball. Oh, he's got to kick it. He turns around. Oh, Jack, please. <laughs> Goes towards half forward. That's actually not a bad kick. And free kick off the back. Free kick for some areas. And they're going to take it at half back through Harry McMahon. He squares it to his captain in blood. He's back in his own defensive 50 still. Sherman. Flicks it wide to McMahon. His engine, you'll think, will have a big say in this final term. Works extremely hard. He hangs it up in the air. Not a great kick. Ball floats over the top. The ball's on the wing out of side. Connors did well to attack the footy and keep it alive. South Bowen, who emerged with it. White has a couple to beat. When looking for the footy and earns himself a free kick for a, over the shoulder. High contact. Todd White. Once again in front of the... St Mary's faithfully weren't happy with that. Geez, he gets absolutely none of that top right. Nearly missed his left foot. Ball goes back into the middle of the ground. O'Neill will be happy with that stoppage. He gets a high free kick. What's it, Kelly O'Neill. White's a right footer. He is. O'Neill goes looking for Fort. That's a free Who kick. nearly Surely. brought it down. <laughs> they pay those uh, Tiki Dutchwood ones and then don't pay the obvious ones. Kirsch as Garner goes short and Goff again. Another intercept for the South Barn fullback. <laughs> Goff at centre wing. I thought Fraser Fort might have just said, hey, umpire, we're working together here. Goff goes long towards Ford again in front. No mark taken by Burke. Middleton trying to kick it through six players. Now Harry McMahon tries to kick it as well. Comes back towards Sherman. His handball was OK to blood. He goes back towards Huggins. Free kick for a throw, said the umpire. Fraser, I'll have it, he says. Oh, Give me the ball. No, Fraser has got it. <laughs> He's 55 from goal. I'm not looking... I'm not passing, I'm not doing anything except having a shot here. He's kicked five goals. It's five seven you. points of difference, South Bowen, with the ascendancy. We played 14 minutes in the final term. Oh, this will bring the house down. Oh, the wow, fortress wait. at his best. He'll do a jump out of the front of that box, I reckon, upstairs. If he kicks this. Yeah, Kirsch might. 55. I think Kirsch is Fraser Fort's playing, manager. Fraser Fort might smile if he kicks Comes this. in, 55 out, right foot kick. No way! And the 12th for South Barwood, 12 4 76. They lead. Samara is 9 9 63. Harvey Norman Electrical Kayra. Final quarter scoreboard. Single handedly ripping this contest apart. <laughs> If South Barn win this, then uh, he's just got the lead. Pop oh, no. with that kick. Rowan just. Goff was coming hard. Yeah, Rowan Goff. The, the, the two long sleeves. I think they can go out to dinner together. Three minutes left of this game. I'm sure Samir is going to have a say, but so far the Fortress, he's done his job. South Barn with the clearance. Oh, no. Back to Trevor. Oh, he just hit his foot. He just hit his foot. That's hard to do if, if, if you tried to do that, Kirsch. As St Mary's going inside 50. Somehow Driver's gone from centre-half back to in the back pocket. <laughs> Newey stuffed up and uh, takes the intercept mark. Handball, Jack. Handball, Jack. Jack. He, he can't here because you can't run from the bike track, so he's going to have to kick it. He does. It spins remotely in the right way. But it turns over. Ling. It's played some sort of game, Harry Ling. He chisels one to half forward. Starkey, the one to grab, couldn't quite mark. The ball's at half forward for St Mary's. Madigan goes without it. Keese goes hunting for the footy at ground level. Kelly dances through a couple. Did really well. Little pocket dynamo. Drives it to half forward for South Bar and the bounces away from Harry McMahon. And it will be out of play inside the South Barn 50. They lead 12-4-76 to St Mary's, 9-9-63. 16 minutes, nearly gone, final term on the K-Rock. Harvey Norman Electrical, fourth quarter scoreboard. He's had a pretty good second half as well, Patrick Kelly. He's really stood up, I thought, particularly in the absence of Mole Rainey. So, boundary throwing. 50 around from South Barn's goal. That too. <laughs> Fraser Fort's looking going. It wasn't even thrown into where the ruck contest was, but it doesn't matter because they've turned the ball back over. South Barn have got it on centre wing and Jack's taken another mark. And That was odd. He might win the Leopold Sport. He's hang on a minute. Jack. Oh, he's kicked it again and that's a good kick. He's looking for Fraser. There's half a dozen players around him. Hamish Burke coming in. Todd White. Now Carmody gives it away towards uh, Lockie Noble to Carmody and Carmody just missed to the far side and through. For one by two goals, one his tally. 12-5-77 now South Barwon. 
They lead. Samaria's 9-9-63. Harvey Norman Electrical. K-Rock. Final quarter score. Oh, Blood turns it over. He went looking for Rayner, who was standing 40 metres out all by himself and overcooked the kick onto the chest of Pat Kelly, who have a chance directly in front, Kirsch. Absolutely. I said they're averaging about six intercept marks per quarter. They're up to seven already, uh, South Barwon. So they're getting it done behind the ball as well as ahead of the ball. So important to play that both aspects of the game. Already has one in this final term, Pat Kelly. It was a lovely finish from a similar sort of distance. Just to finish the game, I reckon, Buzz. It's a big call. Ooh. Still some time on the Barn Foods time clock. In comes Kelly. Shapes it to the left-hand side. Through for a minor score. 78 plays, 63. 17 and a half gone, final term. We've made it 20. It makes it uh, a difficult margin. So the ball with Harry Ling at fullback for St Mary's. Long way from goal for them. And you're kicking in from the northern end of the breeze. He plays on. Gains 10 and goes with the kick. I don't know who that was to because Matty Calder was there. He's lucky. He only got a hand to it. Madigan, though, followed it up. Left foot kick, top of the square. Which way is it going to bounce for draw? Oh! Hits the post. Hits the goal post to the near side and through for one behind. So they get a 12-7-79 now. They lead... Samaria's 9 9 63. They kick it in again. That freeze has really picked yeah, up down it here. It has too. Thanks uh, for that, Birchie. Falls, spills free to White. Kicks it back to the top of the square. Burke goes up. And his own man nearly took it away from him. Cunningham with the outside of the right foot. Through for one behind to him. So they're doing it in ones at the moment. 12 8 80. And they lead at Samaria's 9 9 63. It's on the Harvey Norman Electrical K-Rock final quarter scoreboard. So are real kicking issues, aren't they? They're not really looking for the longer one, though. They're looking for that sort of maybe 40 metre, 35 metre kick. This one's got to go long to Minchin. No ifs, no buts. He is in the hot spot down the line. Blood tries to bite one off. Off comes with the fist. There's a whistle. Which way is it going? It's going St Mary's way. There's a South Bowen player down too. I think it's Kelly from that marking contest. Sherman. Back into the middle, opens things up. That was a good kick. Back into the middle, driver has to hang in the air, gets the fist over the top of Ham, falls to Keast, has a couple to beat and does. Kicks the centre half forward, where's Goff? Oh, it's a fantastic grab! A Hamlin hanger and nearly shows the Sharon just to say, yep, I know I'm good. Hang That's on, a he's good back. Mark. He's it. back in it. <laughs> Squares it to uh, half back. A Hamlin hanger contender from Rowan Goff. South got a Barland. game winner at one end and a game saver the other. Oh, oh, Starkey has got the ball at half back. He kicks it along the line and, in fact, kicks it into the uh, backyard. It's out of bounds on the full, so Sam Burke will take the free kick on centre wing. Drives it towards half forward. Ham in front and can't take the mark. Punched away from him. Then we'll have a boundary throw in left half forward for Samaris. They try by 17 points. We have played 20 minutes in the final term here on the Barn Foods time clock. Sells the freshest fish direct to Udonga Road, North Geelong. And they have to score from this Ford 4A, you'd think, St Mary's. And they go up through the middle. Todd White can't take it. And Middleton wrapped up by Sherman. Pushed to the ground. That's holding the ball. But he's not going to pay to come in and do a, a ball up. So they kick it quickly, Sherman, towards the 50. Holds up. Oh, Lockie Wiedemann comes across and says, I want to do a Rowan Goff impersonation and does one and takes the mark inside defensive 50. Goes on his left foot. Fades to the middle of the ground. It might work, though, under the chest of Noble. It does. Goes by hand quickly. Carmen, he's got some space to work in. He's got Broughton short. He runs a long way. Kicks from 50. Look at Fraser. And he's pushed he's it. And dirty four ass. is dirty. And why wouldn't you be when you got six? Uh, how many has he got? Six. Six. Uh, it was all by himself inside 50, but just pushed it to the left-hand side. Another minor score. 12 9 81 now South Barwon. St Mary's 9 9 63. Nearly 21 minutes gone on the Barwon Foods time clock. Final term. The winner, of course, plays St Joey. St Joey's in next week's prelim. Oh, short little kick in. Finds Damien McMahon from Harry Ling. Set to play on at all costs here, St Mary's. No mucking round. Well, that's it. They're, yeah. they're trying to do this uh, yeah. uncontested possession yeah. game. He's got a jet forward motion. Rayner takes the mark. In still inside defensive 50. Tries to drill it towards Garner. Todd White against him. Ball spills free. Jack Blood leaves it in the end for 
Maishman, who'll get it back from Hamish Burke, run along the wing, takes a bounce, handballs over the top, drawing the player. Braden Ham, his handball back over the top to Garner, gets a shepherd all back to Maishman, nearly hit him in the head. He gets the handball further. Damien Imar now 50 from goal, drills the ball into Sprague, takes the mark. Oh, he thought about playing on quickly. He still might not be. It's going to be hard from there. He's Absolutely. going to be kicking from 40 directly in front, but uh, with the breeze against him. And they need this some Aries. Well, we saw Ethan Boris's kick from yeah. just probably five metres further or longer uh, in that third quarter, and it held up pretty much. And uh, this is going to take a, a fair kick. Charlie Sprague's kick one this afternoon. 40 out, southern end of the ground. Runs very close to the man on the mark. Drills it. That is a great kick from Charlie Sprague. Beautiful kick. So he kicks his second. And a little bit of hope. 10 9 69 now for Samaris. They trail by 12 points. 12 9 81. South Bow and Harvey Dawn Electrical K Rock final quarter scoreboard. Well, you see what Samaris were trying to do then. We said they wanted to get some forward motion. They were going sideways with that uncontested ball, but once they got that run and overlap going, they maintained a bit of possession, kept the ball in that shorter sort of kicking and handball style rather than kicking to the intercept mark. That's what they didn't want to do, and that's some good ball movement. 81 plays 69, South Barwon's way. 23 minutes gone on the Barwon Foods time clock. Final term, Starkey attacks it. At the back of the centre square, Boris caught. Got his handball clear just in time. Oh, no. Oh, way. No, said the uh, umpire. Johnson inside, 50. Madigan got back. It was going on to the chest of Garner, who picks up now. He's caught and brought to ground. He's played a slim oh, tackle. No. He's played a slim tackle. Oh, no, no. They just lost the plot a little bit here, the umpires. <laughs> Garner, he's 55 out, just <laughs> pops it up to the hot spot. McDonald nearly brought it down, comes to ground level. Johnston needs to be clean. He's on the turn. Goff, and he's off. Takes the mark, it takes a bounce. Rowan Goff, he's feeling it. It's all about the vibe, says Kirsch. The fullback's taking a bounce. And, and, he back, no, he and then nails the kick onto the chest of Pat Kelly. That is some fantastic play from Rowan Goff. And Seth Barwin can just... Oh, breathe a little easier, Jay Stoughty. Yeah, it's actually Jackson Carmody. He's got the footy on centre wing, and he just drives it long towards Fraser, who goes up against a couple. And it's off hands and out of bounds for a throw in. <laughs> I think Enjoying. he was too scared not to kick it to Fraser that time. Uh, yeah, just kick it to Fraser. Exactly. Yeah. After the last time he singed him. <laughs> not sure what right. more Ethan Boris could have done here. No. To get to oh, no. <laughs> Boundary throwing 50 around from the South Bowen goal. Callard up against Rudd. Rudd comes to the front. Madigan's handball was okay. Carmody's handball over the top to Todd White. Coming the other way, Connors. Blood. He is taken over the boundary line. And we'll have a boundary throw in. About 30 around from the South Barland goal. They lead 12 9 81. Samaria's 10 9 69. We have played 25 minutes on the Barland Foods final quarter time clock. How many minutes do you reckon, Curse? We're running here. 30. 30, so about five minutes. Game time left, according to Matt Kershaw in the experts' chair. As Hughes is happy to see this one over. The ball still in South Bowen's half, just outside 50. That's right half forward. 12 9 plays 10 9. Got to take a couple of risks here, Kirsch, don't they, Samaris? Yeah, they do. But uh, I guess that educated risk where you don't kick it to that intercept mark, they've had 10 already for the quarter. Comes to the back of the stoppage. Madigan on the fly. Cunningham straightens up and kicks it. It's game over. Game over. Harry Cunningham with his second. And South Barwon can breathe easy. 13-9-87. Plays St Mary 69. 25 minutes gone. Final term. Goal from stoppage. Absolute slick hands. What I liked about it, they didn't panic. They didn't just blaze away and have a shot. They were calm. They were steady. They got it to the outside run. And Cunningham, he's been good today. Must get injured more often in a game because he's come out determined. It's been terrific. So back in the middle. But uh, seven forwards at the moment. St Mary's. Minchin gets it down. Broke by though. Kelly, can he pick it up? He can't. And over the top of the football. And Kellett comes in, puts the tackle on. Sherman, he's not going anywhere. So still inside the centre square. Kellett, big thumper down. Boris. 
Bit of the football blood over the top with a handball. Johnston, Rigel, that's throwing the ball. Absolutely, holding the ball. And then kicked away by Chalcraft. And it will be a free kick coming back to Chris Hughes. Back end of centre wing. Oh, it's going to be Wiedemann. He wasn't anywhere near it, was he? Oh, he but was anyway. not. <laughs> oh, he slips over as he gets the kick away. Big thump away. And uh, it's a free kick for a push. That man again. And uh, it's going to be Harry Cunningham, who's having a massive last quarter. He's going to take the free kick just four to centre wing. 27 minutes tick by on the Bowen Foods time clock. It's South Bowen who lead this one, 87 to 69. Cunningham to half forward. Big climb from Caldo. Couldn't mark. Falls to Chalcraft. McMahon was caught as he tried to exit half back. Play on the call. Tumbled back inside 50. Rayner attacks it hard. Does well. Brought to ground and South Bowen get a stoppage pretty much directly in front of their own goal. 35 out. One more would absolutely put the nail in the coffin. One down. Here it is. Noble on the turn. Pushes it on the snap. Through for a minor score. Handy His point. First score of the afternoon. Really getting some shots on, aren't they, from stoppages at the moment. So they're working hard around there. They're still on the move. South Palm by 19. Harry McMahon with the footy at fullback. Plays on. Drives it as long as he can. Who's going to mark it? It's I'll going to be you. back, Heldu. <laughs> Wow, we. It's a 12 intercept mark for the quarter. Wow. <laughs> we said they were averaging six going into the last. They needed a big intercept quarter and they've come up with 12. Doubled the average of their game and it's been telling. So Matt Caldu, 55 out from goal. I'll oh, take your time, wouldn't you? Yep, you take all the 30 until even the umpire says. Yep, play on. Let's He's go. kicked two. Just start your walk in slow. 28 and a half played in this final term. And. Matt Caldu, we're going to have a great view of this as he comes in, just left of centre, right on the point of the centre square, right foot kick. It's not going to make the distance. Oh, oh. Razor! Razor. The fortress! Just put the dot point on it. Just put the end to it. That's it. Fraser has taken the mark. And I think he's just... He might tip Goffey out at the moment, I reckon, okay. if he puts this through. Well, he... He's kicked six. There's the siren! South Bowen win! Seven. I said 30. We're out by 54 seconds, Buzz. <laughs> so, it Fraser comes not. in. Ten out. Kicks the goal. His seventh of the afternoon. And they finish 14-10-94 South Bowen. They defeat Samaris 10-9-69 in the first semi-final. And in that quarter, they kicked five goals, six to uh, one goal for the Samaris team. And it's 25 points, the difference at the final siren. And South Bowen go to the preliminary final to play St. Joey's next week. And the winner of that to play Leopold in the 2024 GFNL Grand Final. And see both teams coming together with the umpires at the end of the game. Great game. Fantastic. The weather was much better today. And Birchie has headed out to the middle to get somebody from South Barwon as the South Barwon boys come together.